Okay, folks, we are live! So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Music's YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly... Ooh, what am I going to be today? Let's see here. What am I going to be? I'll be your friendly... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Soulmaster? Mm -mm. I guess, Soulmaster? That sounds about right. Uh, because today we are uh, going to be... For, uh, for those who are joining us uh, at the usual time uh, live, uh, we had uh, intended on continuing on with our uh, Rogue Trader Warhammer Fantasy... Uh, Warhammer uh, 40k uh, RPG campaign. Uh, but due to sickness and people moving and, and whatnot, we just could, uh, the, the session was not coming together. Uh, so we decided, in keeping with a Warhammer vein, uh, to take out... Uh, another Warhammer game that I actually have yet to play in the channel. Uh, War this will be uh, Soulbound, uh, the Warhammer Age of Sigmar uh, RPG. Uh, I well, anyways, first off, well, with me tonight uh, is Sean, one of the stars of our uh, well, many of our campaigns uh, here. Um, but this Sean was the one who helped uh, me decide what um, what we were going to take out for a spin tonight. Uh, I will say, so for uh, for those listening at home, what we'll be doing tonight is starting to play the uh, content from the starter set. Uh, so Sean's playing two um, pre-gen characters. Uh, I have the, whoopsies, proper rule book here as well in the event I need to go beyond, but the intro uh, adventure seems to have been written specifically to introduce both a game master and a player to the, or and players multiple to the to the game. Um, before we jump into the adventure, uh, what, what's your level of familiarity with Age of Sigmar, John? Um, like I know you got background in, in fantasy and in the 40k, but uh, how much exposure? Yeah, do you have? so I've I played quite a bit of Warhammer. 40,000. I've played uh, a pretty good amount of, of Warhammer Fantasy, a good amount of that too, uh, multiple um, editions, quite a bit of the latest of uh, Warhammer. I've run quite a bit of um, Warhammer 4th and Warhammer 40,000. But Warhammer Soulbound has been out there um, and I, I bought a bundle for it. So I got, but I just, you know, I just, I just haven't, haven't had the chance to, uh, to kick the tires and you know, I heard good things though. And, uh, you know that you know it's a high high fantasy for sure. You know, underlined, high underlined. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, you're you know you're a, you're a big dog. You start as a you know a particularly kind of big dog in the setting. I think is my understanding. And um, going after bag like it's it's unapologetic. It is full blown, no holds <laughs> barred. You know you are going after bad guys. That is your job. You know go get them. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, and, and representing that, so it's kind of cool. I, I'm ready. You know, it's uh, it's good. I'm glad we're we're getting it out there. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, I uh, I've had the game since it first came out because I was getting the other Warhammer game, or Warhammer Fantasy stuff from um, uh, Cubicle Seven, and the game looked great. And then I heard great things about it as well. But the the thing that has been um, the, the reason I haven't got it to the table uh, sooner has really been just because I find I have found thus far I shouldn't say I find I have found thus far the setting very hard to wrap my head around as to what I, like what am I what am I presenting this as uh, at the table in, in an RPG yeah. um, I, I've listened to some short stories and uh, some I got halfway through a novel about the um, what do you call it the uh, what are they called the the big space marine types. Uh, the uh, uh, not Night Quester, what are they called? Stormcast Eternals. Uh, uh, and oh. that was a really cool one to give in the same way that some of the novels give a much better insight into like what a Space Marine, how, like the differences between them and the fact they actually have personalities and stuff. That one does a really, it, it did a good job of giving some insight into the Stormcast Eternals as well. And uh, the setting, for those who are unfamiliar, is a mythic post apocalyptic setting of epic fantasy i think is the fairest way like this is a place the the default uh, setting for the the game is uh, a place called the mortal realms which is kind of like a a region at the junction of every other existing world the canonically the world uh, takes place after the destruction of the original um world uh the original old world the timeline for the games from um, uh, Warhammer Fantasy pre-4th edition, I think, uh, uh, goes directly into Age of Sigmar, whereas 40k is its own kind of universe and its own thing. 
this is a direct connection. Uh, there are characters and gods and whatnot that you will recognize from, if you're familiar with Warhammer Fantasy, whether through the role-playing games or the tabletop games or the computer games, um, there are characters that carried over, like Sigmar, uh, the, the, who gives the name to the setting, like Nagash, the uh, undead general. Uh, there's uh, Car the Karsteins, Karnsteins, whatever the name of the vampire uh, accounts were. Uh, they have carried over. Um, Gotrick Gurnison, uh, the uh, troll slayer himself, made his uh, way into the Age of Sigmar as well, because there's a series of novels there. So there's carryovers from one to the other. And the timeline, the thing, one of the reasons I, I had a hard time with it too is that the timeline is kind of nebulous. So um, what we're going to do today, because I don't want to give um, the, I, I don't want to give wrong information about the setting. Uh, is we're going to see how much we can learn from the starter set itself. What I know about the setting is that we are, um, there was a period of like thousands of years of kind of peace and stability, and then chaos came to here as well, and then caused problems. And then the most recent event at the time that we're going to be playing is this thing called the Necroquake, which I believe is when um, Nagash uh, either awakened or came to, um, this period also sees uh, where there was a great deal of cooperation between many of the gods, uh, between Sigmar and uh, some of the other, the elven gods, the elves in, in this. Um, and the at the time, the, the they don't call them the dwarves, the Grimnirs, maybe? I can't remember what the, the name of the dwarves are in this. Uh, but they um, uh, there were alliances between the gods, but one of the gods, the, one of the Dwarven gods died in the interim, and they're sort of splintered. But what brings our heroes together is this ancient pact that dates back to that pre-incursion of chaos, where heroes from different factions would fuse their very souls together into a pact to try and like, you know, bring peace or stability, kind of be roving heroes. And that's where the game gets its name from, it's the soul bound. Um, there's a, a narrative meta currency called Soul Fire that the characters can draw on as well. Um, but that act of binding the heroes together also means that when there is discord among the soul bound, it can have an impact on the wider world as well. And it's as Sean said that like the, the scale of play is supposed to be quite big and bombastic. We are not playing first level, you know, characters in a level based game where a strong breeze and, you know, is going to take them out. These are heroes who are very capable and will get only more capable over time. So um, why don't you tell us who you're playing today, uh, Sean? You got two characters. Oh, you might be muted, Sean. <laughs> you are correct. Uh, first, start with the face, uh, probably, which is... Uh... The, uh, the priest, the war priest, that is, uh, Zan Bemer, I'm going to go with. Bemer? Sure. Does it seem reasonable? Yeah. It's a post so Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, who knows? Who knows how they pronounce things then? Uh, so he is a uh, he is a big, charismatic um, war priest that is, you know, highly confident, completely relies on his faith, extremely comfortable in his own skin. That, that's my feeling of, uh, you know, it, it's nice. I like, I, I do, um, P Cubicle does a good job. And I think like these starter sets, they, um, you know, they give you, you know, obviously you don't have to use it, but I like the fact that they give you stuff to rely on to, you know, to kind of put your feet on and uh, yeah. makes it fun and get you started, gives you some, uh, some Definitely. touchstones, some easy, easy, big touchstones to go with. So yeah, this guy's this, you know, a 230 pound big dude with a giant war hammer in one hand, the book of the, uh, I'm not quite sure, Holy Book of Sigmar in the other. Yep, Holy so Tome of Sigmar. Just, oh, so I got the classic, <laughs> uh, it, it, I, I more think of uh, Warhammer 40,000 with it, but the classic, you know, books on chains, that's, that's so iconic. <laughs> I, I'll, I see a book on a chain and I'm like, oh God, there it is. Yes, yes. <laughs> So he's got you know the holy tome on a chain and the other. I don't think he even puts the book down. Is my impression as he uses the war hammer. So you do have uh, a throwing that's... hammer too, a hand oh, hammer. Oh, good call, good call. Yeah, yeah. Well. I've got uh, you know kind of like a sword and a dagger. He's got a war hammer and he's got some hand hammers. Yeah. Um, that can be thrown. 
So he's he's uh, the big, he, he strikes me as the face, you know, the big uh, out in front, um, you know, wishing all a good Sigmar day, and they better darn well have a good Sigmar day, <laughs> there could be trouble. Um, so uh, so that's, oh, and he's got, um, you know, as I will find out more in the future, and I don't know much about it at the moment, but he's got miracles, so he's got kind of an interesting combination, mm-hmm. as, as, um, as I guess priests can, is that and they are... Too. Uh, Oh, that's right. Um, and how about the name of that pet? What do they call it? A, a Griffhound. A Griffhound. How interesting is that yeah, yeah. sound? It's, uh, the Griffhound looks like, I, I didn't load an illustration of it for him, but that's the Griffhound nice. right there. Who doesn't like Griffhounds? Oh, to- yeah. <laughs> that's big time. So, uh, so yeah, interesting combination of a melee character with powers, uh, miracles in this case, uh, and he's also a healer, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, with a little bit of, I, I'm trying to remember, and I'll, I'll get it. Oh, here we go. Uh, interesting. Yeah, he's got like it's got, and I like his smack. He's got the, he's got the, um, he's got some healing. I think he's got some a little bit of offense. I'll have to, I'll, I'll figure it out. He's got intimidating manner. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Sure. I mean, anything Warhammer, you know, fantasy or 40,000, you got, you know, priests are automatically. <laughs> there's no kind priests are not really, not really the thing. Not so much. Um, so then that is, that is Zan. Then there is Emrin Seagale, uh, Sealgear. Emrin Sealgear. Yeah. Um, I, I do not have a handle on her, uh, a see elf so i, I, I uh I wonder, she's, think yeah just... she's in uh, and an elf of the uh what is it here Mm-mm-mm-mm. uh of the idoneth deep kin uh, uh there yeah. are if i remember correctly there are two types of elves uh in the setting there's these ones uh the the deep kin and then there are these like um you know, light magic kind of wielding uh, warrior paladin kind of elves as well. And I can't, I, for yep. the life of me, I can't remember what they're called. Um, but yeah, she is, um, here's what you've got on your character sheet for Imran. Uh, she's a tidecaster of the Idoneth Deepkin. She is pragmatic and resolute, undertaking the bleak tasks she is assigned with grim resolve. Her eyes are distant and full of loss, but she secretly hopes that her service to the soulbound will help her people grow stronger. Like many elves, she is perceptive and quick to react. Nice. Mm-hmm. So she yeah, be, she's got, it, so, so it seemed like a good idea to get um, get some magic in play as we uh, you know figure things out. Um, and as Kevin brought to my uh, attention early that, you know, Zan's got miracles, which I didn't really take into account with that, with those choices, but still kind of fun to get the magic user in play. Um, and you think, you know, Zan at 6'2 is, is a pretty good size, but Emrin is 6'9". So yeah. uh, she's a, uh, she's <laughs> yeah. a tall glass of water uh, and 185. So she, she, uh, she needs to, uh, in a wind, she needs to hang on to a tree or something. Yep. Uh, but uh, she is a willowy lady. <laughs> <laughs> but she's 80 too. 80. That's uh they must live lo- Oh, elf of course. Elf. We're back to the elves. Right, right, right. Yeah. There you go. Uh, elf with an A. A E L F. I'll have you know. I've got um, the other characters here. I can tell you what the dwarf is called. Dwarves are called uh Dwerden. Uh, Dwerden. There's two kinds uh, of Dwerden in uh uh in the in the uh core book at least. All right. Cool. Nice. So with that, let's talk about, or let's start playing some Age of Sigmar here, and we'll just talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see how well we are playing. Uh, it's the Faltering Light uh, adventure out of the uh, core rulebook, or core, the um, starter, starter set. set. So let's see here, we can skip past the introduction to what an adventure is. Let's take a look first at the region over which you're traveling. So this is the region around the, um, the, it's the part of the mortal realms uh, where you are gonna be trying, let me just move our tokens out of the way here. Uh, our adventure will be taking place in the city of Bright Spear. The setting for, where is Envelgard? Uh, 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 ah, up here. This is the setting for that, um, uh, Shadows in the Mist uh, adventure, like the first mega adventure they published for it. 
Uh, and yeah, so let's see here, we got some, so they call it read aloud text because it's not in a block, uh, but I think we all know what, uh, <laughs> what kind of text we're talking about here. All right, so block text says, you are scions of what remains of the pantheon of order driven by divine purpose. Some of you are direct representatives of the God King Sigmar entrusted with a holy duty. Others are bound together by a more powerful arcane ritual. Your souls entwined for eternity. You are soul bound, destined for greatness or death in the war for the mortal realms. You stand on the deck of the Grund, a Caradron, Caradron? Caradron? I don't know. Caradron so it probably sounds closer. Uh, airship. A Caradron are one of the two Dwarden groups. They're the ones that are kind of like steampunky types. Mm -hmm. um, uh, bound for the newly reclaimed city of Bright Spear. The ship pitches mm -hmm. and sways as the wind whips past, and the Dwarden crew race back and forth in preparation for landing. As you look out before you, the gleaming city of Bright Spear awaits. Let's take a look. So there is your first glimpse. The gleaming city. Oh, how about I not? Oh, here we go. Of Bright Spear. The city uh, is divided in two. The sprawling lower tier is filled with new construction built atop ancient ruins, while above an enormous plate circles a spire that reaches up to the heavens, the beacon of Bright Spear. Around the beacon, nine globes attach to, uh, attached to enormous armatures slowly rotate as the great orrery follows the rotation of the eight mortal realms. The ninth globe, representing the realm of chaos, has been shattered. Broca Broca's daughter, the uh, captain of the Grund, calls out her final orders as you come in to land. The ship docks in a berth at the top of the high port, a huge spiraling tower that descends into one of the busiest parts of the lower tier of the city. A treacherous staircase uh, continues downwards in great loops and you can see other airships docked further below. As you disembark, a man clad in heavy maroon armor and dark robes approaches you. He's close to seven feet tall and carries an arcane looking staff. In a voice that seems to echo uh, throughout his chest before coming out. My name is Vontus Tavaria, Knight Incantor of the Stormcast Eternals. Lord Arcanum, Solania Gravewing has been waiting for your arrival. Without any further word, he turns and leads you to a waiting gyrocopter, a small vessel that can carry half a dozen passengers over short distances. Now, before we hop in the gyrocopter, let's take a quick look at, I'll give you another handout rather than going to the screen. Uh, I like that picture of Bright Spear. It's fucking cool, right? Like it's actually all the art I got from this came from, I think all of it came from the starter set. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good it's a good picture for the description, you know. It's like yeah, definitely. To... And here is a map for you of the city of Bright Spear. Mm. So I'll show you where the different uh, uh, the different mortal realms uh, correlate to the names of the winds of magic from Warhammer Fantasy, and the. Uh, what do you call it? The city itself, you'll see, um, I think the grayed out area that you can see there, that's, well, I guess the, the dotted line that shows you where the um, the new city and the old city. I, and I love, if you see underneath where the color coding of the districts are, you've got a side profile of the difference between the cities. That's, I think, pretty fucking cool. That is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
So it's way atop that spire is where you are. There is a gyrocopter awaiting. Um, as before, how I, oh, you know, this, I'm, I'm, what I guess, do you think, uh, how would uh, Jan and Imran react to this? What, what's, Jan incidentally is actually, is from Brightspear originally. Uh, Imran, you said? Uh, no, no, uh, Jan has. Zan, Zan, yeah. Im oh, Imran being part yeah. of the Deepkin. Uh, right. This right, is right. not a, an ideal location for her. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think. Um, I think. Uh, Zan is. Uh, I think he he's got a generally upbeat, upbeat outlook, and um, you know, Sigmar has us all in the in the palm of his hand, and. Uh, and he's he's that he's got he, so I think he's a he, did you say that the guy just wheeled and you know he didn't really he didn't wait for a response was that not my... wait at all and you can picture it so the stormcast eternals these are the uh, that those giant like gold clad armored figures and yeah. they are forged by Sigmar himself it said mm. souls that have been and not for nothing you would uh, know this as well. Uh, when they die, they return to Sigmar and will often come back uh, from the dead. Mm. Mortals can be ascended up to this. Yeah, they are the angels of Sigmar. <laughs> Reforged, mm. they come back. Trouble is, is that the more times you do that, the more damaged the person becomes because you have uh. some memories of what happened before, but they're not always clear. Mm. So, um, yeah, there's yep. a risk with each uh, return that you will come back, you know, irretrievably insane. But so Zan, um, he uh, you know he's happy to be home and uh, and he's right he's right at the beginning of a big you know ha, 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 when the guy just leaves you know and yeah. and Zan's, Zan's amused by this he, he was amused at the beginning he's having a good time like this is his uh, he's a mirthful generally unless there's you know he's he's uh, he's got a good attitude uh, but he's he is heavy handed with his faith that's that's Zan. And um, so he's about to have some, you know, well met kind of conversation, but he's like, ah, okay, you know, <laughs> and, he, and he trundles off. And uh, and I think uh, I, I assuming that the two have been together for some period of time. Yeah. Emran, you know, has seen this before, and uh, she's fine. Whatever, she's she's along for the ride right now. Okay. You know, she's yeah. So Emran is probably the last to sit in the gyrocopter, and as soon as she does, uh, the gyrocopter lifts uh, with a shutter giving you a clear view of the city. You see bustling markets, great factories, thick smoke from an enormous crematorium, an imposing fortress and prison, a great garden hanging from the upper tier, and countless other sites. At its center is the Spear of Heaven, the beacon at the heart of Bright Spear. And you can picture as you, the gyrocopter is humming as you're going over, blah, 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 and there are a bunch of them in the sky as well. Uh, there are uh, this. Oh, actually, I can tell you what the population is to give a sense of how big the thing is. Here we go. Nope, I can't tell you that because I do not have that information. <laughs> um, now, as you're flying over the city, uh, would you kindly give us, uh, for Jan, would you give us a uh, a lore check? please, using mind. Your difficulty oh. is going to be a three. So that I'm not sure, well, I haven't actually rolled anything in, in the character sheet yet. So if it prompts you for the difficulty number, the DN, it's gonna be three, one. What that yeah. tells us is the three is the target number you need to get in each of your D6s. The number after is how many successes you need in order to succeed. First roll of the game. Here we go. Uh, did you? What did you just say? Uh, I just, I've already forgotten what so, you just. <laughs> <laughs> lore, please, using mind. I think it's it's already yeah, set and, to mind. And what's the target number though? What's the target idea? number is a three for Zan because he's from here. Three, gotcha. Nice. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Zero successes. Sad, okay. Sad. That is. Unfortunate. Now, Imran can make a roll against uh, for lore uh, against a difficulty of uh, four. Okay. Now, one of the things we can talk about quickly as well is what narrative meta currency you have access to, because uh, there is metal, which really seems to come up more in combat, and there is soul fire. 
Let's see how Imran does in her roll first. All right, let's see here. Hang on. Her DN oh, is going to be a four. Four, got it. All right. Four is the default, incidentally, for... for, uh, for... There oh. you go. Two successes. Very nice. And this is a six. All right, so... Um, she may be the one who knows more uh, about this than what uh, Zan does. Metal uh, can be spent. Uh, you, your metal goes up by one each uh, round, up to the cap of whatever your cap is. Uh, it can be spent to take an extra action, uh, to use a talent or miracle, to double your training dice. So before you roll, I'm not sure if it prompts you for this, but uh, when you roll your um, uh, your check with a skill, doubling your training means you're going to get twice as many dice in the roll. Your dice pool is your stat plus your skill. If you spend metal, you can double the amount of dice you get from your skill. Uh, and then there's another one called focus. What focus is, is something you can spend on a one-for-one -one basis to edge up the dice. So if you've got, say, a, like on, um, on her roll, she got two threes in there. If she had two focus points, she could have spent one on each of those to make that four successes. Okay. Yeah, that's how focus yeah, points work in this. And you can also spend. Is, oh, go ahead. I see. You can spend metal to double your focus uh, uh, that you, as well. So if you want, if you really didn't need to make a a, a check succeed, so that's metal. And then there is soul fire. Uh, soul fire. Do, 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 do. When you gain a short-term goal, it recovers soul fire by one. Long-term goal recovers all soul fire. You have a number equal to the number of soul bound in the party. So you have two soul uh, soul fire. You can spend it to get a uh, maximum success on a test. Each dice counts as a six. No need to roll. You can re-roll as many dice as you like. You can recover all your toughness, which are your hit points in the game. Recover all spent metal or cheat death. Just not die. So, uh, and the notion that um, Zan has uh, just going through the, uh, he has only one mind. He's more uh, soulish than uh, an intellectual. So he only had one shot at it and uh, and didn't get it. Yeah. And then, um, but she she's the brain. Uh, she has a four mind. So she rolled four dice and there you go. She, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, for short term goals, um, here's for Zan. One would be root out the servants of Zinch and burn them in Sigmar's holy fire. Another one would be help the children of the Foundling Academy. Or a third is raise up a memorial or other marker. Wait, hold on. Yeah, you pick one of those. I'm going to suggest root out the servants of Zinch because this city was recently seized from the, a, the followers of Chaos uh, and worshippers of Zinch. And what is that again? We're picking what? what That's, is that a, this is your goal. This is how you'll get soul uh, fire back. Okay, okay. Uh, Sounds good. And then Sounds for uh, Amran, uh, find the worst mortal in Bright Spear and claim their soul. Uh, open Ooh. the eyes of the collegiate arcane to the power of your magic or make a discovery in your scholarly field of interest. Interesting. Which would be um, in in uh, Imran's case, her area of scholarly interest is the mortal realms. So you would learn something about the mortal realms. Which of those uh, stands out? Uh, that first one almost sounds like its own quest a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I don't, I don't know how you know how. I mean, this might be just interesting because we want to, we want to, we want to get it out front, even if it doesn't come into play. You know, in a single session, um, that yeah. might be challenging. Um, gosh. Like it's probably that third one might be the easiest. Yeah. Okay. Or at least the that most likely good. to to occur yeah. in in the game to come in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's what uh, Imran, as you're you're flying over the city, uh, this is what uh, she has uh, revealed. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. And with uh, two successes. Okay. Uh, so unlike many other cities uh, of Sigmar, uh, in Bright Spear, the Stormcast Eternals rule it directly. So rather than just being simply the, you know, warriors in service to Sigmar who happen to support the city, they actually rule the city of Bright Spear. Hmm. 
Uh, second, uh, this is because ma uh, many of the original Conclave members were killed in an uprising called the Necroquake. Uh, the Necroquake was caused by Nagash, the god of death. Undead rose throughout the realms and slaughtered countless mortals. Uh, the threat of Zinch and the other Chaos gods exceeds even that of Nagash. And finally, Bright Spear's youth means uh, that it can serve as an example to the older cities of Sigmar as a way of achieving victory against the enemies of order. Because Bright Spear was actually part of, I can tell you a little bit, just for your edification, so you, because Zan is from here. Bright Spear is the new name for a city that has stood for centuries. Founded by the ancient Aglaraxian Empire, the city is built atop a sprawling underground complex, an Algaraxian citadel created to shelter the Algaraxians and withstand cataclysmic events. Unfortunately for them, neither the Aglaraxians or nor the citadel were prepared for the ruinous powers and the age of chaos. The very coastline near the city began to crumble and disintegrate, falling into Zinch's realm even as his servants assaulted the city. Um, Oof, the Aglaraxians had spent years in seclusion, hidden in their underground citadel, exploring the limits of arcane power. They reshaped flesh into unholy abominations and constructed unfathomable de magical devices to change the world, all of which were, were a siren song to Zinch. For centuries, mm. mortal and demonic servants of Zinch inhabited the city, twisting and reshaping the city's spires while plumbing the depths of the citadel below. All of that changed when Sigmar directed the Celestial Warbringers, a host of Stormcast Eternals who can foresee their own death to retake the city. The prescience of the Celestial Warbringers confounded Zinch's followers, and they were eventually driven from the city or fled below. The city was renamed Bright Spear, so-called for the towering beacon at its heart, and for the Stormhost who freed it, who, uh, who were sometimes known as Sigmar's Spear. Uh, with the city reclaimed, settlers followed. Unlike most of the cities of Sigmar, which are constructed anew around a captured realm gate, Brightspear seemingly had no realm gate, and the city was already built, though it was twisted and ruined from centuries of Zinch inhabitation. Uh, without a realm gate, travel to the city was difficult and relied heavily on enterprising Karadran uh, captains to ferry folks to this uh, fledgling settlement. It was a slow progress, but in time, the city began to grow. The taint of Zinch was slowly burned away, new structures were built, and ruined buildings were rebuilt, repurposed, or demolished. But just as the city began to take shape, the necroquake struck. Hordes of specters and ghosts surged forth from the citadel below and the surrounding lands. The restless spirits of Aglaraxian's victims swelled with the souls of the, uh, those slaughtered during the Age of Chaos as thousands of undead erupted throughout the city, devastating the fledgling popula uh, populace. When the night was over, a fraction of the city's population remained. But Axians are stubborn folk and once again began to rebuild. Uh, actually is the realm of fire, so that's why, I mean, you kind of see everything red and whatnot. Uh, it is close to the realm of fire. And the realm gate thing, what that is, those are passages, natural passages to one of the other realms. Um, most cities are built around a realm gate, and realm gates can be used to not only go to one place, but can be to, you know, travel to other places, I believe. But this place is not. So you've got, um, it is a bit of an unusual uh, location. Mm. But, so, um, with that, and passing over this uh, a this ancient and uh, recently reclaimed city, R Riborna, you would say, the gyrocopter lands with a bump on a raised platform in the shadow of the Spear of Heaven. The gigantic tower stretches from the storm-racked heavens above and seems to plunge all the way down to the depths of the city below. A huge fortress has been built around the spear, 
and a number of other Stormcast Eternals guard it. Without a word, Vontus disembarks the gyrocopter and gestures for you to follow. Um, you can... Uh, oh, actually, this is another lore check, but this is a difficulty of six. Why don't you give us two difficulty six? And actually, I'll make it, uh, I think, a five for Jan, because he's from here. Let's see. Yeah, we'll say it does. It does offer you the chance to do a lore bonus. You asked before whether it, you know, it asked about uh, for for. Um, oh, there, you said in the yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay. <laughs> so he's rolling one. I mean, because he doesn't. He's, he's rolling, got yeah. He's got mind one with no lore, so he's <laughs> that's not his thing, you know. But, but, but it is her thing. Imran, uh, a lore against a uh, difficulty a DN of six, please. All right. She's got four plus one, so she's you know she's in the game. There, there you, go. you go. Yeah, yeah. So that is two successes. Holy smokes. So here's what she knows. She also likewise knows. Um, and, you know, given her sort of scholarly specialty, you know what? Hold on. Let's take a look at her talent to make sure we're using oh. that. Um, mm, 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 mm. You double the dice gained from training in lore uh, for tests concerning the mortal realms and realm gates. So that's not quite this. This is about the city itself, but it's something to bear in mind. She will get that bonus. Um, but here's what Which, she knows. What was it called? Which talent is that? That scholar. Oh, oh and scholar. if you click on, if you want to see them, like for, if you click on the little speech bubble thing, it'll display them. There you go. The other thing is that nice. the plus symbol will open them up. I wasn't sure how um, cluttered you wanted the character sheet, but yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Nice. Oh, and it says on her, it says on the, this version of the character sheet that it's Mortal Realms is what her focus is. I don't know why I didn't uh, duplicate it there, but. Um, so here's what you know about the spear. Uh, Amarin, you read, uh, read about or, or heard from someone uh, that the spear itself was made in the Age of Myth. Uh, and it has weathered storms and wars untold. So this is something, the Age of Myth predates the Age of Chaos. The Age of Myth is that thing I was talking about where, you know, thousands of years, the gods work together to sort of forge the mortal realms. Uh, then came the Age of Chaos, and it was pretty much abandoned as all the gods went into their own, the, in, retreated into the realms. And then Sigmar was the one who led the charge to come back and drive back Chaos. So these, and it's a bit of a sliding scale. This is because it's a mythic setting. You know, there's not a set like, and then, you know, in the year 1024, you know, it's just an era passed and then something else happened. But mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so this would just to say that the spear here uh, is extremely, extremely old and has suffered effectively at least one end of the world thus far. Mm. Um it is uh, dark now, uh, but it is said that the beacon atop it once shone with a light that banished all evil. A fortress around it uh, is a new construction that is known as the Portentarium. And it was built to house the Stormcast Eternals that protect the city, well, protect and run the city. Mm hmm. Mm. You can also have each of them make either, uh, this is going to be a DN6. Uh, oh, actually only Van, uh, Jan can make this. <laughs> it's once again, a mind, but it's mind arcane or mind devotion. I think he actually has some, at least a point in devotion. Uh, he does, and he has focus too. Oh, and he's got focus as well, nice. So uh, it's okay, so make a devotion check, right? Mind and devotion, please, yeah. And for those listening at home, there's only three stats in the game. Uh, there are your body, mind, and soul. Oh, interesting. Now, this is a case where um, it's showing the default is soul. That's what it has. Yeah. And we're going to switch it to mind. Switch okay, to cool. mind, yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, and I have once again immediately forgotten the difficulty number you've the given me. Difficulty number is a six. Six, here we go. Not good. Yeah, I mean, that oh, four, not, yeah, that four. Right, right. 
Now, if it was a five, I'd be in business, right? Maybe. Exactly. It's the focus point coming to play. Yeah. 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 So unfortunately, but as you said, it sounds like um, Jean isn't really play, paying all that much attention to what's going on. He's, he's kind of laughing and <laughs> I was, I ate my first whatever over there, you know, maybe something like that or, you know, yeah. you haven't grown up here, you haven't grown up here. He's all right. So uh, Vontis uh, leads the party to the Portentarium and he guides you through to the main chamber. Uh, Gold-clad columns stretch upward to stretch uh, to support a curved ceiling that once held images dedicated to the en ancient Aglaraxian Empire that founded the city. These have been repainted to show Sigmar's storm throwing back the forces of chaos during the Realm Gate Wars. Um, Jan, you, you would recognize this, and you can see there are um, you know, what's depicted is them crushing the forces of the uh, ruinous powers. Uh, the, you know, a corrupted a uh, agents of Nurgle, uh, the furious agents of Korn, uh, the twisted um, agents of Slaanesh, and the sorcerous forces of Zinch, all disappearing beneath a wave of golden power and even brighter golden armor. How does Zan feel being in the presence of this edifice to Sigmar's conquering glory? I think he, he soaks it in. Um, he's good at this. He likes doing it. He's good at it. He's like, oh, you know, praise Sigmar. And he's just, and he's he's 100% authentic. Just, you know, this is not, he doesn't care who's watching, who's listening. He just bathes in Sigmar's glory, you know, depicted and says, uh, uh, we are in his hand, Imran. And yeah. Imran's, you know, got it, got it. Seriously, I got well, it. Yeah. <laughs> cur curiously, Imran might have a very different perspective on it because what Imran would know is under that thin layer of paint or patina or whatever is used to paint these things, centuries of history that said the Sigmarites have just painted over mm -hmm. and of sorceress, uh, they likely uh, triumph or trumpet a similar conquering uh, success, only in that case, it would be over the power of sorcery and magic. Hmm. And there may yeah, be even- probably, go ahead, go ahead. Go, no, go right ahead. Imran probably looks over um, with, a, with, a, with a wizard's look, you know, with a knowing kind of, you know, let's all calm down. You know, it's it's complicated. You know, that's yeah, that's the uh, that's probably the classic, the classic scholar slash mad magicians. Uh, you know, you know what? It, it, yeah, Zan, it's it's a little more complicated. But uh, but you know, she's good natured about it because you know this is this is Zan, and there's no holding him back. And you know, he's this is what he's all about. So it's all fine. But uh, she's whatever. You know, it's all good. Yeah. And what you can see is uh, the two of you. You know, uh, both seem to be looking up at this massive ceiling. Jan, as you say, is, is unapologetically just drinking it in. And you realize that uh, Vontis suddenly has s seemingly some patience for you. Because he's mm. waiting until you finish, you know, appreciating the majesty of what has been built here. Zan, uh, Zan like, snaps to and looks at Vontis and, um, and sees that and points at him with a big grin and nods, you know, like just this kind of, you know, good feeling. He's got, when, when nothing bad's happening, Zan's all about good good vibes, like good feelings and Sigmar's here, you know, yeah. yes. So and not uh, all the yeah. Stormcast Eternals are like um, archetypical, stoic, you know, uptight warrior kind of things, but Vontis is the one who kind of like, definitely clings to that. Whatever station he has, you are aware that he, is wearing slightly different. The maroon color of his armor, for instance, is, is different from what the other Stormcast Eternals wear. Um, mm. th there's a great deal of variety between the Stormcast Eternals as well. Some have like magical flying wings and others specialize in archery. Some are more, you know, make use of um, miracles and such, even magic. Some are, you know, melee fighters. Um, so there is a great deal of variety between them, but this guy's, the maroon armor definitely is something different from it, but it seems like you're not really paying much heed to whatever the, the significance of that is. 
Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it's not rank, right? I mean, Zan wouldn't already know it. He's, it's not something obvious. No, okay. it's, yeah, and that's probably, the thing. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing with the role was from before. Yeah. Um, who do you think is the first one to prompt? Like, okay, let's let's carry on. Uh, is it Imran or is it uh, Zan? It'd be Imran. I mean, Zan's where he wants to be. He could set up camp here and let's have meals brought in and just soak this in some more. And Imran's I, like, okay, <laughs> okay, you know, here we go. We're am good. I correct in thinking that Imran has heard um, probably the stories depicted above on many occasions along the road? And their travels yeah, across. Yeah, and that's when it's not. That's when they're not in this room, you know. Yeah. So now that they're in this room, you know, goodness help you, to uh, escape the clutches of Sigmar's glory. So he, yeah, she's pulling on. Uh, in fact, I think she pulls on. Um, I'm see. I'm, I'm gonna take a look at his. Uh, hang on, I'm gonna take a look at his picture here. I think he's he's got robes, right? Priest. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, it, it's a neat thing where they actually have assigned to each slot. You have certain things. So he has uh, oh, yeah. around his. His cloak is red with gold trim, and he wears mm -hmm. war priest vestments. I think she pulls on his cape. It looks like he's got kind of a, uh, you know, capish thing. Yeah. And so she gives a little tug. You know, she's done this before, and uh, she tugs on his... Uh, He's also a little physical, like he'll, you know, he's like gesticulating, and you kind of have to duck a little once yeah. in a while. So she knows not to like, okay, like don't swap me inadvertently here. <laughs> well, she's got seven inches on him too, so. Right, right, right. Sure. <laughs> she's six right. nine. Yeah, yeah, he's right. got girth, but she's got the height. So perhaps and, maybe uh, she, she's she got this thing called, um, is it Pelagaris? It is a Pelagic Staff. Uh, um, so perhaps she could just coom on the marble tile on it, makes the sound to, you know, to get his attention. Kind of a clearing your throat, but it's a staff, yeah. Exactly, tack, and he kind of looks over and realizes that uh, she is ready to, to move on. And it gives her a, um, you know, a, 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 um, a kindish, you know, familiar, uh, ah, yeah. and then, the, you know, and on we go. <laughs> So with uh, you turning to move, uh, Vontis very quickly turns and, and uh, begins walking again to keep that, you know, a pace ahead of you. But it's not long until he reaches, um, at the far end of the hall, a large set of ornate double doors uh, that adjoin the main hall. He pulls the heavy doors open and gestures you inside, but does not follow when you go. If you both go in, the flow of the huge hall is an intricate pattern of multicolored marble tiles swirling in a sinuous design that is, truth told, unsettling to the eyes. At the far end, the Lord Arcanum stands, surrounded by her advisors, listening to their counsel. And I have another handout for you. Let's get this ready here. There we go. That's one thing I love about when we get to run these... Uh, Especially with um, uh, Chaosium products or Cubicle 7 products. There's just a ton of great art and great handout. Yeah. This is. There. This is what she looks like. Mm. R remind me where she fits in the um, hierarchy. Is she the Lord Arcanum? Is um, Lord is, Arcanum is would her? be the um, highest ranking Stormcast Eternal here? Okay, in the in the city. Uh, in the city, uh, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember this. Yeah. Unlike other cities, the uh, because the uh, the council was killed during the Necroquake, uh, the Stormcast Eternals took over and run uh, Bright Spear right now. Yeah. Um, so while she is listening to her councils, uh, her eyes are intent on the table beside her. A dark wood frame surrounds a field of enchanted sand. It moves and shifts, forming the shapes of Stormcast warriors in miniature as they survey the disintegrating shores. Uh, now, new figures emerge from the sand. Zinch, 
demons. Vaguely humanoid with uh, vulpine or vault, not vulpine, that's, that's wolf like, uh, vulture like um, kind of uh, uh, heads to them. Strange bluish skin that seems all so bright in color. At, well, I guess it's, it's sand, uh, but you see them appear in the sand. The Stormcast Eternals turn and give battle, the shifts sanding, shifting to and fro as the combat rages. With a concerned glance back at the sand table, the Lord Arcanum waves, her, uh, waves away her advisors and beckons you forward. Her advisors all disappear. She is uh, quite like, she is a Stormcast Eternal as well. So she's likewise gonna be like nine feet tall. Uh, as you walk over towards her, uh, she says, thank you for coming. The war here. And she, without looking away from the table with these sand miniature armies, they managed to fit a, a tabletop game in the intro scene. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, the war here, it's not going well. Mm. There are agents of Zinch everywhere, even in some of the highest positions in the city. Our warriors are spread thin, and the city has little wealth to hire more mercenaries. But there is hope. If we believe in legends. And her eyes move from the table to you. She looks earnestly in your eyes, going from uh, Zan first to Imran, and then continues... We believe the stories regarding the Spear of Heaven are true. I will show you, but you mo must swear absolute secrecy. If the Agents of Chaos here learned our plan, they would do anything to stop it. Of course. And uh, they both nod solemnly. Okay. Uh, she then leads you to the back of the hall um, if, if you ask anything of her, I imagine even as uh, chatty as Jan is, he's not going to be prying uh, to get answers out of her while she's leading it to clearly somewhere else she wants to talk, or would he ask? Yeah, his his um, disposition uh, changes uh, from, you know, a returning to his home city and uh, bathing in Sigmar's glory to, uh, yeah, serious business. I mean, he, he is... Uh, Despite being gregarious, he is well capable of, you know, he, he's a soul bound. And, and, How does um, he feel um, being in the presence of one that's been reworked by Sigmar? Reborn, in fact. I think he, um, he appreciates it. I think, uh, I want, do you think he's been around Lord Arcanum's? I don't know. I mean, given his given Lord Arcanum, his perhaps bound. not. The, but the Stormcast Eternals, for sure. Yeah. As a, a priest of uh, Sigmar, and you actually you grew up out here as well too. So the the uh, y if you grew up in this city, it is likely after the Stormcast Eternals took it over again, right? Yeah. Yeah, because he's not that old. He's thirty eight. So. Now that's interesting. Hold on, because he actually they say in the adventure he's from here, but they also say this place was only recently conquered huh. so i don't know how that works i don't know if your character grew yeah, up yeah. while it was a, it was a haven for chaos or right. what but right hmm well in any event that's not a thing we need to get uh caught up on i don't think to be solved at another time <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um you when uh, there are inevitably going to be uh you know frays at the edges of uh created worlds and you can choose to either throw yourself into them or you can pick at the edges and yeah yeah i prefer to yeah. do the uh former uh, Salonia yeah. Grave, so what she does, oh, she introduces herself, of course, as uh, Lord Arcanum Salonia Gravewing. She leads you out of the portentarium, uh, gathering um, Vontus once again along the way. And then in public, she asks you about your recent experiences in battle or in reaching Brightspear. There's a little bit of like little uh, small talk that you have, you know, going. She's not like quizzing you on things. It's something just to kill time until you reach the Spear of Heaven itself. You, uh, Jeanne, being from here, would know precisely where she's headed. 
I think that uh, I think that Imran um, does polite polite small talk as is intended. She's not particularly uh, chatty anyway. Yeah. Whereas Zan is at risk of breaking into tales of uh, you know nonsense and long winded. Um, but but it's a sobering moment. You know, he's in the presence of uh, of high rank and and uh, great portent, and so uh, he keeps himself in check. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a, with a look at Emran, who's probably giving him the eye, like uh uh uh, and, mm, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we we um, everything was fine. And or, or you know, maybe there is a, a small mention about well, you know, it was. Whew, that trip over the so-and-sos was, <laughs> it is what they say it is, but we made it fine. You can see as you're walking along on this thing, and again, you're still way, way up, like you're right near the uh, the center uh, of the city at this point as well. Uh, as you're walking along, um, Vontus uh, quickens his step just enough, or perhaps just lengthens his stride, so he reaches this door ahead of the Lord Arcanum, and draws keys out, and uh, and a set of ancient-looking keys, places them in the door, unlocks them, and then opens them. Salonia um, fully opens the door to the Spear of Heaven and ushers you in. Above, suspended hundreds of feet above you, uh, is a gigantic white crystal, dull and lifeless. And what she says is, behold, the beacon of Bright Spear. And kind of waits to let that settle in. And she turns back, her eyes away from the uh, crystal sphere. Centuries ago, it burned brightly, keeping the enemies of the city at bay and providing guidance for travelers in this realm. But it is no more. She guides you to the railing around the central shaft that descends into darkness. Below, a thousand feet or more lies a most unusual realm gate. And remember, the city wasn't supposed to have a realm gate. It too is dead. We are certain that the two are linked, but the best of the collegiate arcane, the iron weld arsenal, and other clever folk have not made much progress. The key, we believe, is in the Undercity. Now, she says, you wish to serve the city of Brightspear, and she's directing it to you, Zen. Yes, yes, of course. Solve the, riddle. Light must shine. Solve the riddle of the beacon and the gate. Without them, we are but one battle away from losing the city again. Mm -hmm. Both uh, both have matching furrowed brows at this point, Zan and, uh, Zan and Imran. Okay. Uh, she then explains that uh, Vontus will escort you down to the realm gate then provide you with contact information for a guide to the Undercity. However, she says, the guide is a liar, a cheat, a sneak thief, and a coward. Mm. But he's also our most reliable option. Mm. Then, Perhaps I can provide a bit of Sigmar's light to him. And she, he winks at uh, Imran. Yeah. Uh, Imran, I imagine, um, sort of, you know, yeah, yeah. Pass, right, yeah, yeah, and you can see there is this is where you can see like the Stormcast Eternals may seem like demigods, but there is this like kind of like silent exchange of looks of like, oh boy, he just has no clue between the, the two Stormcast Eternals, so yeah, there is definitely a person still in there, uh, albeit clothed in the power of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. With that accepted, um, she does not make a big display of it, and she says, good. Uh, the Sigmar, uh, the, the Sigmar watch over you, bring light to our city. She turns and leaves. From the number of 
uh, advisors that were around her before and the furious activity on that sand tactical table. Uh, it seems like her, you know, uh, her time is, is quite uh, precious. So, um, is there anything you wish to, um, to do before, uh, Vontis uh, leads you down? So what is my impression of, uh, I, probably more, I mean, probably more Zan since, um, since yep. you grew up here, of the Undercity. Is the Undercity still well populated by the population, or is this like a no man's land of, you know, there's no stores down there, there's no markets, or, or is it just a darker version of the city? No, so that's a good question. Um, so what you remember, uh, the Undercity is the old Anglaraxian citadel. So that's where for centuries during the Age of Chaos, uh, they held out uh, and conducted horrific medical uh, or ma magical experiments to transform their bodies and whatnot, um, which were then further twisted by the forces of chaos. And it said as they were retreating, as they were driven you know, back, that's sort of where they disappeared to. So there can be all sorts of phenomenal riches from perhaps even dating back to the age of myth down there. But it's also rife with uh, a whole host of horrific powers. Uh, to say nothing of whatever the Necroquake may have shaken loose but did not emerge back up onto the surface. So demons, uh, abominations dating back uh, two ages, um, cultists, the undead, spirits. So nothing but good, right? Uh, do we need, um, uh, let's see, I get maybe he looks at Imran. Uh, do you think they need um, rations? Like, this kind of a would you need rashes going down there? Yeah, uh, like that. He's he's wondering. Yes, right. So probably, he probably needs yeah. a pack. He'll be down there multiple days, nights. Uh, maybe you know bedroll wouldn't maybe be a terrible idea. Yeah. So he he mentions this to Emran and says uh, we should uh, or yeah and they're they're I'm probably on the same page and um, and so mentions it to uh, says Vontus. Uh, we probably need preparations. We will be gone for at least some time. Uh, rations, bedroll. Um... Vontus uh, says, uh, bef uh, you were talking to him, right? Not to Imran? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He says, um, he nods and says, you will, you will have that opportunity. You should meet first with the researchers. Okay, very well. And then uh, looks... And then uh, Imran and Zan, I, I don't, would they, either of them, I can't think of, I don't think that they would need anything. I mean, I don't, I don't know their characters that well. I, I, don't, I don't think, think to so. be with the researchers, no. I mean, you guys, yeah. you certainly would have opportunity, uh, and you can think of a bunch of places down, especially in the lower tier, uh, where there, where you could go and, and collect um, something. I will Whatever. say the, it's neat in um, the, what do you call it? Um, it's neat in the so the starter set comes with this uh, bright spear city guide, and it's nice. got like seventy one places in the city described in it. Oh wow! So just as, as a uh, a nice little you know small sandbox kind of setting to start playing, and it's it's pretty great. Really? They did something similar with the Warhammer Fantasy uh, game as well. Yeah, I was Box just set. thinking the same thing. The starter yeah. set was really cool. That uh, uh, whatever the city is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it Uber's Reek? Uh, Uber's Reek, yeah, Reek, yep. Reek. Yep, yep. Yep. I think right. I think you're actually saying it right. Uh, uh, it'd be I E if it'd be Reek. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. somewhere uh, in golf is shaking his head at my fucking terrible German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so then, um, off if we go to the researchers, uh, Vontus. He nods, and curiously, you. I think Imran, you think you sense just a little bit of of kind of. Like, a, a, a re, not regret, but, uh, like, something that th this seems uh, perhaps beneath him to do. Vontus? Beneath Vontus to, uh... 
To like to, to show us to the researchers? He's a god built warrior, right? Reforged yeah. by Sigmar to be a weapon of war. And what's he doing? Escorting around a couple of mortals. <laughs> show them the town. Yeah. So uh what yeah. he does is then he um in the observation room itself, where you're kind of watching this thing, he re walks over to uh, a set of controls that you had not noticed before and touches one or two things, and then a whirring sound comes from it. A few moments later, a most unusual lift rises from the empty shaft. Yeah. In its center is a circular platform that remains motionless whilst an outer track spins, carrying itself up the walls of the shaft. It comes to a stop, and the knight in canter, uh, uh, Volta gestures for you to board the lift. They do so. Uh, once you both step aboard, he gets in, hits a button on it, and then it begins to spin, and the wind whistles as you descend into the Undercity. Vontus looks nervous as he stands at attention while the lift goes down. You wouldn't think you'd see a nine-foot-tall man guttering, but uh, here we are. Um... Ooh, here we go. Uh, you, why don't each of you... Let's just start with uh, Jan. Why don't Jan give us a intuition check? A soul and intuition check against a DN of four, please. There you go. Zan, now he's, now he's cooking. Mm. So... Uh, you realize that the uh, obviously that uh, Voltus, Vontus, excuse me, is um, deeply uncomfortable, and the way he grips his uh, the staff that he's been uh, leaning on uh, definitely seems like he would. Um, he's a little fidgety, and I think if he looks down, he meets your eyes, and. Jan's eyes either are hazel or blazing with the power of Sigmar, depending on what they are. And um, maybe in the darkness, he sees the blazing and he meets your eyes and then looks away and says, then he turns and leans in and says, as you're hurtling down through the darkness, there is a traitor among the researchers. Take care. And Jeanne and Imran, you have an up. Both of you exchange looks at one another. And the circular disc, I'm. Unless you have any questions you wish to ask, he doesn't. The way that. Uh, Vontus then turns and stands back up without giving you any notice, suggests that he's not inviting any further conversation, but Jeanne definitely seems like a pretty outgoing feller, so um, if you wish to ask anything, you can. Imran, if she doesn't care about uh, manners, could likewise ask something, or you ride down into the darkness until you reach your destination in silence. I think that was serious enough, and they are ostensibly alone, um, yep. the three of them. Uh, I think they both say at the exact same time, do we have any idea who it is? Like they, they like do a they do a jinx thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then they both kind of look at once. each other. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think then what um, Vontas, Vonta, without turning, uh, just simply shakes his head. You can see the big helmet moves back and forth you know, a good three feet above you. And uh, and then, you know, Vontas can see that they look the same now. They both have the same frown on their face, you know, showing they've been together too long, maybe, of yeah, you yeah. Know, shared too many, uh, shared too many adventures. Well, you also, your souls are bound to one another. Uh, so there is inevitably going to be some kind of uh, yeah. instinctive connection between the two of you. Uh -oh. Um. Now, let's see here. Where is it? 
Ah. Let me show you the destination. Yeah. There we go. I realize now I should have maybe. Oh, there, actually, there, there we go. Never mind. Happy coincidence. I'll take those. Okay. Let me bring you over to what you see, and then I'll tell you. All right. The circular lift descends into the center of a gigantic chamber. The disc comes to a rest inside a circle inscribed with dozens of magical runes. Around the circle, you can see an almost upside-down orrery consisting of a set of nine spheres. Eight of them shine with the light of a certain realm, yellow for Chamon and the lore of metal, purple for Shaiish, the lore of death, uh, blue for Holy Azir, and the lore of the heavens, and so forth. Each is semi-translucent and seems to have something within it. The fifth sphere does not glow, but seems to suck in light. Runes around it identify it as chaos. Uh, why doesn't Imran give us a Mind Arcana check against uh, DN of six, please? So be Arcana against DN six. Mm -hmm. Nice. So what um, Imran can see, uh, Imran, like you've never seen, uh, you've seen Realm Gates before, but you have never actually seen something this impressive, this mm -hmm. um, elaborate. Of a uh, of a realm gate, I think. I think that would count as her reaching one of her goals. Just so you know, I don't think you can get soul fire. Actually, I shouldn't say I, I don't know what the limit is on soul fire. Let's let's take a look quickly. Let's see, because if you can get three points, you might as well. I don't know if the soul bind uh, soul binding is uh, uh, limits it. Let's see here. Soul fire. Soul fire and doom. Okay. Okay. There we go. Uh, tracking soul fire. Your bindings. Maximum soul fire is equal to the number of player characters less any Stormcast Eternal characters. So you're already at your maximum. So that, that answers that question. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. So, um, but what you could see. You were discussing our uh, group resource, right? Our um, That's soul fire, yeah. Yeah, soul fire. Yep. Yep. So you have, you have two uh, at maximum. Um, the curious thing about this Realm Gate, and the reason I say it's it's, it's, it's of such interest to Imran, given the number of uh, different realms that are represented in those orbs, this gate itself may be able to access any realm, not just one. Hmm. And uh, <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's um, Zan's turn to look at Imran, who is lost. You know, before it was Zan in the in, oh, the, yeah. in the room of Sigmar, and now it's Emran and and um, and Zan can't he can't help himself. He reaches over and and uh, you know whatever you know reverses the uh, that little uh, <clears throat> yeah. You know. So you know, with that, uh, I was just checking to see what her results were. With the focus point, she could have bought a second success as well. Um... So I can tell you as well that this realm gate, uh, it is most definitely something built by the Aglaraxians, not something that um, either predated it or not something built by the Stormcast Eternals. This is something crafted by that long lost empire of sorcerers or city state mm. of sorcerers at least. So um, 
Vontus steps off the lift into a busy scene. Uh, there are groups of academics, mages, and engineers clustered around tables and work areas around the chamber. Uh, in the center is a circular area with an orrery encircling it similar to the to that above the city. Noticing your descent, one of the group, a dark-skinned woman adorned in yellow robes of the collegiate arcane turns to address you. Uh, she motions towards the contraption, an ancient realm gate, nearly forgotten. Dead, as far as we can tell. And I ha believe I've got an illustration here. And let me uh, ask you, Kevin, that the um, so and the focus being used to nudge the dice, that's free. If you've got it, you got it. You're all good. You don't need to spend anything to do that. Uh, uh, no, you do have not. a focus. I, I don't think so. Enough. Yeah, like I think, uh, let's take a look at the... Because I don't see it on the metal, I don't think. And I don't... I don't to, see it on either. To, I to, sorry, spend which? You don't have to spend... So in other words, you make a roll and you do have focus, but to have that focus... Um, activate you don't have to spend anything it just happens right if you've got the focus that's good enough that'll nudge the dice yeah by just having it you don't have to spend a exactly so the number of dice you roll when making a test is referred to as your dice pool your dice pool for a test is determined by your attribute score plus your level of training in the skill being tested each level of focus in the skill allows you to add plus one to a die after it's been rolled for example with focus two you could change a three to a five two threes to a four to two fours or whatever so focus always gives you uh, just one. So the number of focus gives you how many you can add, not how many dice you can affect. Uh, it, it kind of. Well, I mean, like it kind of would be both. It's both, okay. Well, because like if you, I mean, it, it, it's only both in the sense that like because you can only spend so many. Like if you have three focus, yeah, you can in, in theory add one to three dice if you want, but that's oh, not necessarily a guarantee that every one of those would be well spent. No, I got you. Yeah, so you, but, you, but you can yep. split it across. The, yeah, like got every it. every roll when you've got focus, you can choose to spend those after the fact. Gotcha. And then you can spend your metal to uh, to double it. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. After rolling. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Um. yeah, and then you rec recover metal once at the start of your turn. The thing I don't know, and maybe this is just because the starter set, I don't know if uh, uh, about using metal outside of uh, combat. Yeah, yeah, if you regain it outside of combat. I'll look it up in the core rule books. I got it here anyway. Worth looking yeah. and seeing what insight that might have. So, metal, 129. Okay. Let's see here. You can spend metal on talents, including casting a spell and miracles outside of combat. Yeah, here we go. Uh, outside of combat, characters regain one point of metal each turn, uh, which means most characters will be back to their maximum metal in a few seconds. For this reason, tracking metal outside of combat is usually unnecessary. This also means mm. that abilities and talents that require metal to heal toughness can be used freely out of combat. This is fine. The characters you play in Soulbound are hardier than regular folk and the ability to heal and shrug off injury and continue the fight is part of what makes them stand apart. If you'd like to limit the use of metal, page 298 contains options for alternate ways to use metal in your game. Mm. So that's cool. So basically, like, always... I don't know why you wouldn't... Ah, here we go. So doubling your training, uh, where you double your the dice you get from skill testing, can only mm -hmm. be used in combat. Oh, I, oh, that list is same only thing combat, for, isn't it? Yep, same thing for double your focus. You can only use it this way in combat. So activating a talent or miracle, um, those are, including casting a spell, it says I think. Yeah, those are things you can do outside of combat without really kind of restriction, um, or using any talent or miracle. Uh, but like taking an extra action, you'd have to be in combat in order for you to be tracking actions, doubling gotcha. your training, doubling your focus. So there we go. That makes sense. Okay. Cool. So 
then what um so the sorry the, the person who was talking to you is not who i thought it was um so as she as you walk off um and imran you'd recognize this is the collegiate arcane which is uh let's see here let's sit on here because you're from here Hmm. Oh, I see that uh, her scholar talent doubles the dice gained from training in lore for tests concerning the mortal realms and realm gates. Yeah, so she would have doubled. Oh, so she would have doubled. Why don't you roll an extra? Um... What is her training? Her training is uh, lore. It's a uh, one. Okay. So let's roll an extra okay. d6. Yeah. Two. Okay. So no. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I, can, I can actually can't find the uh, Collegiate Arcanum in here. But um, once um, you all step off the uh, platform, the woman in the yellow robes uh, nods. Yeah, she nods to uh, Vontus. You may return to your post, Vontus. He grimaces and remains motionless. She frowns, but quickly recovers and reaches out her hand to the characters. To the characters, to, to you. <laughs> Fucking Bushla DM. Um, she says, uh, I am Cadis Amard, head of the Gold College here in Brightspear. Lord Arcanum thinks that you can help us. Oh, I do have an illustration for her. Look at that. This trouble is the uh, art order does not match up with the text. In uh, the thing. Yep, tricky. Because uh, I, I will remind you, the description is a tall, dark-skinned woman adorned in yellow robes. Uh, those do not appear to be yellow to me. <laughs> right. Uh -oh. So I was looking at them. Right. Wait, what? So right. here's what you would know, uh, Imran. Um, as a um, someone from the Gold College, uh, she is a mage of Shaman, uh, the realm of metal. So her magics would likely relate to uh, to that type of thing. I am Cadis uh, Amard, head of the Gold College here in Brightspear. The Lord Arcanon thinks that you can help us. Uh, what, what do you think? I'll put her name on the token as well. I think, uh, I think first, uh, Zan speaks out of turn, missing the fact that it was his, that is his partner was addressed and said, well, Sigmar works in mysterious ways, and then and then uh, Imran waits for like, you know, I think she was addressing me. And uh, and then um, Imran says, uh, yes, I, I trust, I trust, I trust the judgment of the Lord Arcanum. Uh, we don't have enough. Um, so, and unlike Zan, um, she speaks more precisely. Zan's, you know, in big, you know, big bromides and, you yeah. know, Sigmar heals all and, you know, uh, you know, and so, and she's more, uh, she needs numbers, a little more, a little more, uh, you know, a little more surgical scalpel type yeah. comments. She's, well, we don't have enough information to know exactly, but uh, I trust her judgment and uh, I look forward to making our contribution. Okay. So she listens uh, to you all and then her eyes kind of go back to her work area. And then back to you. It says, well then, uh, the first problem is getting the doors open. Um, we've never been able to pry them open despite our best efforts. And she points at three huge doors that are evenly spaced around the chamber. And she says, I, I must uh, get to my work, but uh, please, and she gestures at uh, two other groupings of people, please feel free to... Um, Introduce yourself to the others working on the problem. Um, your extra efforts are are welcome. Thank you. She turns and heads back to where there are some other 
uh, battle mages or mages of Chaimon uh, waiting. Now, there are, broadly speaking, three, uh, two others that seem to be uh, in charge here. And I'll show you who those are. So one is a Dwarden. That's some headgear there, baby. They do not mess around. <laughs> um, nice. Age of Sigmar in many ways looks at uh, fantasy in 40k and says, why so subtle? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And there's the other. Uh. Now, I think you, Jan, are looking at the other groupings that are in here. And it is Imran who is obviously focused on uh, the realm gate um, and the realm doors uh, themselves. What you can tell is the Dwarden who is over there, uh, Jan, he uh, appears to be looks like he might be from a band of mercenaries called the Fire Slayers with a Y. And yeah, he seems to be, a, the, he and his uh, fellow Dwarden are in the one corner kind of doing their work. And then the other, uh, she appears to be, part of the Ironweld Arsenal, a group of elite engineers and artisans uh, that supply the forces of order. So you've got mages in one corner, you've got engineers who keep this, you know, uh, magical clockwork place functioning, and then you've got this band of Dwarden mercenaries who seem likewise working on things. The whispered warning of Vontus definitely whispers in your, rings in your ear, I imagine. There is a traitor among the researchers. Now, while you're deciding, Ooh. Jan, perhaps who to introduce yourself to, um, Imran, why don't you give us either a arcana or crafting test using mind against a DN of five. And I will point one thing out. If she learns something about realm gates or the mortal realms, that's a short-term goal reached, she will gain a soul fire to token back. And one of the things you can spend your soul fire on is to treat every dice rolled as a six to achieve maximum success on a test, mm. if you so chose. Yeah. There will be the question of whether Zan will consent to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really stretching your role playing too curious. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, we'll assume that he is gonna consent to all uses, yeah. but that is, I mean, that would be a, a way of sort of like taking advantage of, the, of that uh, narrative meta currency, but also knowing you're gonna be taking advantage of the way you get that stuff back. Yep. All right. What? That's, uh, I think, is a decision you make before. Oh, oops. Gotcha. Uh, I, I see. I see. Oh, oh, oh. You got to each. To, no, oh, no, no need to roll. I see. Well, that doesn't say, actually. Uh, so, no, you yeah. don't need to roll then. So, what it would be if you chose to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. One, Let's two, it. three, four, five, five dice of this. And did you, did you double your. Um, your lore or oh, it's not lore it's arcana isn't it yeah okay um so if you did that this is one two three four five successes yeah so let me see here okay so imran uh you have an ability called witch sight 
Mm -hmm. um, so you would spend a, uh, your soul fire. You're going to get it back in a moment here because she's going to learn something. Um, what she knows is that the doors are magically sealed and you can see traces of ember stone, a magically infused uh, realm stone native to Akshi, which is the realm of fire. Patterns uh, inlaid, uh, so traces of it in patterns that are inlaid in the floor. The tracings lead to the workstations and also to the circle around the realm gate. So there seems to be connections from the realm gate to the doors themselves. Mm -hmm. um, while Imran is inspecting that, uh, do you wish to speak to uh, any of the three? Cadis uh, Amard has gone back to working at her station, and then there's these two other strangers who are working at their own. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Are any of them working near a door? Uh, no, they are both at, the, uh, all three of them are at their workstations. Although Imran, yeah. as she's walking around the room, is seeing that there is this, um, uh, Emberstone, uh, inscriptions or in, in uh, carvings in each of the, from the workstations, uh, to the door. Perhaps she goes to the, to the engineer. Okay. So she walks up to the engineer and uh, it is a, a human who, uh, as you walk over, she seems busy at work on something, looks up from her, um, what she's working on and uh, gives you a big smile. You see she's part of the Ironweld arsenal. Um, oh, hello. And Imran, what you could tell is that what's part of what's sitting on there, uh, on her table, are bits of Aglaraxian equipment. She seems to have been completely uh, engrossed in her whatever she's working on. I am um, Ashira Khatri, the high artisan and master of the reliquaries. You were uh, sent by the. Uh, Lord Arcanum, to assist with our task, yes? Indeed. I am Imran Seelgar, uh, of the, uh, Ideneth Deepkin, and... It's rare we see your kind in action. Indeed. Not enough. I am, I, it is, it is good to be here, and, uh, I hope to make a contribution. I saw your... Your specialty, uh, is it in, uh, craft, uh, sorcery? It, mortal realms, right, Kevin? Yes. Mortal realms is my area of focus. Are you a sorcerer then? A wizard of some kind? Yes, indeed. I, uh, I work the... It's in my, uh, description. I think it's some, there's some good description. I'm just gonna, uh, <laughs> I work the, uh... The, uh, lore of the deeps. Yes, I work the lore of the deeps. My people are, uh... I think you're known for the... Tide Tidecasting. Tidecaster, yes. yeah. Tidecasting. Oh, she knows. I, I know little of the, uh, the arcane arts, but, uh, that's certainly a rarity in Akshi. Is that right? Yes. The, Interesting. Uh, let's see here. There is... If you'd like, um, why don't you give us either, because Amber is the one who's doing this, it'll be mined with either crafting, guile, or lore. All right. This does seem to be something related to the portal, so I think that her scholarship bonus would apply if you're going to use lore. I am. So then it's going to be a difficulty number of a three. Okay. And would I... So, okay, so I would put one in the bonus. The lore bonus is one, it sounds yes, like. Yes, right? that's right, yeah. All right, okay. Nice. 
There two successes. Go. And she had no focus in lore? Uh, no. Okay. Lore. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, what... Um, She says, uh, as you're you're talking to her, sees, I think, Imran's eyes going down and, and studying some of these Agaraxian uh, devices. And she says, uh, um, uh, Asha looks, uh, Ash oh, it's actually Ashira, not Asha, typo. Come on, Madison. Go, one job. There we go. Ashira, Looks, and I might move her over here because her name is a lot longer than the others. Uh, Drive me bonkers that it's sticking out. So she sees you looking down and she says, Do you. Are you familiar with uh, Aglaraxian artifacts? I don't believe I am. Oh, these are, well, uh, there's so many of these things to be found uh, in the Undercity. The, I, uh, and what she would not know is that you you are um, intent on venturing into the Undercity. Like your task is not to necessarily oh just open the gates here. Your task is to enter down into the Undercity. She asked me that. Did she, no, she, did that's she... what you would know. You would know that's what oh, your yeah, task yeah. was from what uh, yeah, Jean. Yeah. Um. Yes, my, uh, our, well, I will tell you our, uh, ooh, that, let's see here. Uh, you know what? So I think Emrin, Emrin's cal a bit, a bit calculating and, uh, she is about to go into it a bit more, but then remembers Vontus's comment and, um, and she is going to stay a little vague and she says, well, I think we're, I think, uh, and, uh, and she's a little lost because she's not particularly, um, what's the adjective for guile? She's not, she's not full of guile. Yeah. I'll punt. I don't know what the adjective is. For that. Oh, um, <laughs> guilish. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there is a direct <laughs> cognate. Uh, I mean, like crafty or calculating right, right. or, right, right, right. You know, yeah. I just but, see guile because it's on my character sheet, but yeah, uh, yeah. she's not. Not, not full of guile, and uh, and uh, slightly pleased with herself, she goes to her comrades. Uh, she uses her comrades' ways, and she goes, "I'm sure Sigmar will guide us." And uh, to know uh, to know to know what is needed. But getting these doors open, I was wondering if you had any thoughts. Well, it's. I saw you studying the doors. And the, f well, no, actually, again, she didn't see that actually because she was so absorbed in her in her work mm. here. So, well, we we believe, and she kind of describes what you know what you know already about the uh, about the realm gate that this seems to be one that would open up to any of the realms because of the way that these things are set up. Um, but what she says is that everything seems to be in order, uh, but there's nothing to power the gate. The, the realm stone should be enough, uh, but there seems to be some sort of outside catalyst that is missing, that's needed to power the device. Hmm. Have you come across such hey. things before? And... Uh, no, definitely not. Yeah, no, it doesn't sound familiar. Um... Looking at her magic or anything that could, I mean, it's not going to power it, but I'm just wondering, I'm trying to, hmm. Um, that's quite interesting. Do you think she's ever seen like portraits of bright, I, I'm trying to, I mean, I, maybe Sean has, so I'm wondering if, it, or I, I, maybe I have, that, um, you know, lightning coming down on the bright, on, on over the city of Bright Spear. Is it possible that the spear is hit by something? I mean, she's brainstorming here. She's, yeah. She'll, she'll uh... say that. She'll say that. She'll say that. Oh, she's, well, it would be um, as close to Akshi as we are. Uh, it would be unusual for a storm uh, of such to come. Firestorms we have in, in the deserts, but uh, 
heavens, and she gestures at um, one of the uh, Azir, is the realm of, of light in the heavens. And she points out one of the spheres, the translucent spheres. And as you can see, it is represented here already. Mm. I don't know what the missing component might be. But uh, I certainly cannot determine it um, here. So um, it doesn't seem like it's quite clear, but uh, there was something that you were um, you were told about too, a guide. Remember she said that you were going to be introduced to a guide. I'm thinking, and Emrin is at least thinking that's on the other side of the doors. She could be wrong. I mean, that's her, that she's, in fact, I think she's thinking, yeah. Sean's thinking, she's thinking that that look that was exchanged between um, the first, the uh, Cadus and Vontus, because Cadus dismissed Vontus, not, you know, dismissed-ish uh, Vontus, and Vontus didn't move, and they had some thing there. And she's thinking that's because Vontus is there to still show us the guide. His task isn't done. That's her. That's what Emran's thinking. Okay. And and um, and that lies on the other side of the doors. Now she might be wrong about that, but that's. Does she know, ask about that? Um. I mean, the problem is I don't know that she'd want to ask because specifically because of Vontus's comment. She's not sure whether she should go into it well, with the researchers. Recall what. Um... What Cadis said initially, uh, that uh, they've never been able to pry the doors open despite their best efforts. Oh, good point. Right, 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 right. I mean, I know you're so hanging that's... off of every word of block text here, but uh, <laughs> it's never a bad thing to go back and revisit. Yeah, it's a very good point. Try to take it all in. It's a very good point. Uh, so that is not the case. Um, interesting. Uh... Well, here's what I'm going to suggest. Yeah. When we contemplate it oh, during yeah. our mid-session break. Nice. And we'll come back and see who Zen was going to talk to or what he was doing uh, during the break. So for those of us sitting at home, we'll be back momentarily. Well, I'll tell you the last comment that she makes. He goes, and what does he do? Uh, Imran says, you know, yeah. to, and she's referring to the great, that amazing headgear. And uh, and they look over and uh, Zan is, whether, whether uh, the Dwarden is enjoying it or super annoyed, Zan is doing a lot of talking over there. <laughs> so, so he's heading over to speak to the Dwarven. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So that's what we do when we get back. So for those listening nice. at home, we'll be back momentarily.
Okay, so I, oh my, hey Mercer, thank you so much. That is very generous for you to, uh, uh, to make it, uh, to, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Alder, howdy, howdy. I hope everybody's having a great uh, old school. Hello, hello. James, what's going on? I hope everyone's having a great uh, start to the weekend uh, on their respective ends here. Oh, nice, Mercer. That's good to hear. Yeah, the goal system. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, it's our first time running um, a Sigmar now, but uh, man, it's been. It, it's a neat. I, like I, I've enjoyed reading it uh, too, and I, I love the wild ideas and wild types of characters you can play in the game as well. It's pretty cool. Um, so I can give a name to this feller here. Let's see, I get the token ready to go. Go here we go. And there we are. I'm gonna move them out just a scooch here. Oh Sean, I see your thing spinning. Let me hit reconnect. Maybe I just need to I got you. You're muted, though, I think. Good point. There we go. Yep. All right. So then um, we'll cut to uh, Jan walking up to this uh, Dwarden and his uh, uh, crew that he is working with. And you see that there are uh, indeed metal, magical metal that is actually hammered into their skin. Hmm. It yeah. is only Zan's faith that keeps him from uh, jealousy of that headgear, because um, <laughs> he's so confident in his own, you know, self and. Faith. If it helps, you're sort of looking down at it too, because the Dwarven <laughs> are like their, you know, Dwarvish predecessors, quite, quite small. Yeah. So as you uh, walk over to him, uh, he kind of turns and looks up at you. Let me quickly see if there's any other info I've got on this guy. Oh, there's great stuff in here. My goodness. There's a lot in the a lot of different factions and stuff that are going on in the city. It's pretty cool. Cool, that's fun. Yeah, yeah it's definitely a lot of, uh, here we go. So you would know that the uh, Fire Slayers are Dwarden who follow the path of the warrior god Grimnir, uh, known as the Shattered God. Grimnir fell during the Age of Myth and the Fire Slayers believe his essence lives on in the Urgold runes they hammer into their flesh. They sell their axes as mercenaries to the highest bidder and accept payment only in gold, hoping to find fragments of blessed Urgold. Yeah. So these uh, mercenaries... Um, Let's 
let's see here. Um, okay. So here's one thing. You, it doesn't seem as if, in contrast to the all the different, you know, um, uh, Aglaraxian uh, trinkets and and uh, machinery and whatnot in front of uh, Ashira or the you know uh, different magical texts and whatnot that are in front of uh, Cadus. Braga and his people seem to have a just it's like a a. a table that is full of weaponry and as you walk over he looks up and doesn't say anything until Zhan uh, prompts the uh, any kind of conversation uh Zan Zan as his typical flashes him his uh his big smile like like this is going to be great and uh and says ah Zan Bamir introduces himself. Okay. He just has locked eyes with you. And so therefore, Zan continues, of the faith of Sigmar. You see that big mustache kind of moves back and forth a little bit. Brag Papertu, captain of the Fire Slayers. Mm. He says it in such a way as to say, So, and he looks at the tea, he soaks in the table, and he says, um, well, me and my comrade there have been sent by the Lord Arcana to help with your task. May I ask, what is your contribution here? And looking at the table. What's it appear to be? Fighting is what it appears to be. You're smarter than you look. I think Zan chuckles. He's gonna have to work harder than that to be annoyed and offended. <laughs> what, uh, what is it you are defending against here, if I may ask? Is, is it in case the doors do finally open? There's a little glint that gets to his eyes. Oh, I... If that thing opens, you'll be glad to have a fire slayer here. What is the expectation? We don't what know. Hmm. From what they say, he gestures to the mage and then over to the uh, high artisan. Well, they don't know either. What I know is that the Lord Arcanum has retained us to patrol the city for threats. There are still cultists and other evil types, servants of that dark, my lord, Zeech, and raiders and other dangers. Well, doors open or closed, I am happy for your presence already. And uh, Zan goes back to his big party yeah. grin and says, um, continues. So any, any insight, Braga, since you've been here longer than I have, in what may, what may get those doors finally open? Any thoughts of your own? I have no idea. Hmm. What has she sent you down here for? Are you to pray at the doors until they open? Praying is definitely on the menu, my friend. This. It is endless and continuous. Well, let me not keep you from your task. I appreciate, I appreciate your... Your brevity and your focus, Raga. Indeed. That he seems to take as a compliment. He nods. Sigmar's <laughs> blessing upon you. Grimnir 
watches over me. And that's all we need. And you hear kind of a <laughs> from all the dwarven around there that sufficient to get like everyone at Cadis's table and Ashira's table kind of what the, you know, look over. Seems to have, uh, but then he, they all settle back down and just continue getting their weaponry ready. What would you like to do next? I think, uh, Zan, you look over and you see that Imran has been talking to uh, Ashira and there's, man, there's a lot of strange devices and stuff that are sitting in front of Ashira's um, table there where she and her uh, assistants, I guess, are, are working. Uh, and I think that at that point that Zan heads over to join Imran. Kim. And so um, if you join over Ashira, we'll look up at you. Uh, yeah. Oh, hello. Hello, big grin. Zan Bamir. Zan, a pleasure to meet you. I'm Ashira Katri. High artisan and master of the wild aquaries. Ah. I so, take it you are the, you... Uh, one of the cloth, the servant of the hammer. Sig Sigmar blessings upon you. And upon you, friend. Thank you. So have you two, have you two figured it out? And looks at the doors and smiles. Her brow furrows and uh, Imran uh, <laughs> gives you a look. The, alas, no, the, we still don't know. I mean, Imran has not shared yet that she saw the tracings in the ground that all, you know, matched up with the, uh, um, matched up with the gate itself and each of the workbenches. And I think Imran will do that now. So, um, you know, Zan is thrown out the thrown out that comment, and um, and then uh, Imran will say, um, "Say, uh, say, Ashira Quarte, um, what about these lines in the in the floors? It, it seems to connect the gate to the doors." And then, as an aside, she throws in there too, up, updating Zan on. Ashira Quarte's comment about the power. She goes, oh, oh, uh, uh, Ashira Quarte here says that there there may be a need for power, uh, that it would work if it was simply power. So Ashira walks around the workstation and looks over and looks looking at the ground that you mentioned. She's like, I don't, how did we miss that? Yes. And she walks her way up to the doors and then kind of like is looking back and, and you know, testing with her thumb maybe to, to judge distances. One of her lenses comes down, she looks at the door. Well, well, that's it then. And she turns to look at you too. They open from the inside. We won't be able to pull them open from this direction. Uh, she looks at Imran, wonderful. So your, uh, your insight is incredible. And uh, Cadis, having walked forward a little bit, uh, now he says, yes, that is a good insight. Almost as if she's a little uh, disappointed she didn't notice it herself. Zan slaps Imran on the back, her you know, shoulder. Ha ha, Sigmar, you know, <laughs> kind of claiming Sigmar, claim, you know, credit yeah. somehow. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So with, um, with you walking over the, um, uh, let me see here, just. Yeah, once, um, uh, once she walks over, she says, well then, it's a matter of finding how to get to them. That would require, I suppose, one going through the Undercity. And you see Braga kind of, you know, Tide pokes up. So it is possible to proceed to the other side of these doors, you would think, through, through the Undercity? Ashira says, it would, but it would need someone to lead through. The Undercity is very easy for one to get lost in. Uh, it is a sprawling complex uh, built by the Aglaraxians. One does not know then 
uh, you hear uh, Braga kind of um, grumbles, and uh, Cadus uh, looks and says, uh, "If there's one who could probably lead you there, but I, none of us know where he is." Vontas had some thoughts for us that I think. Um... So if you look over, he, had... he once again kind of. Uh, Shoulders kind of slump, and he says, I can. Are you ready to find him? Or is there more for you to learn here? And his voice just Zan. echo, even as, as like sort of uh, less energetic I'm making this, it's still in that Stormcast Eternal type that just seems, feels like it's energized and, you know, projecting through the entire chamber. I think Zan and Imran exchange a, a querying look, similar to when they were about to come down here. Um, let's see. And they're thinking, what else? So I don't suppose, let's say, says Imran, that we're on the other side of those doors. Any thoughts on what we'd be looking for? Like, Specifically, what would it look like? Do you have any thoughts on this? Who are you asking, Braga? Um, no, probably, um, Ashikwarte, probably. Uh, Ashira? Ashira, sorry, Ashira Quarte. <laughs> uh, Katri, I think. <laughs> oh, Katri. <laughs> uh, Ashira, <laughs> she says, uh, sorry, what was the question for her? It was, what, what is she? What the controls would look like. Um, oh, you know, I, what, let, let's assume we're on the other side of the doors. What do you think it would look? Do you have any thoughts on what it would look like or what we should look for? I think if you, if you could, I think you will know it when you see it. Hmm. Uh, it will be quite obvious. Uh, and if Imran has shared any of her insight into what she recognized about the uh, the orrery and how it seems to interact with the the thing, they'll have no doubt that that she has sufficient magical knowledge or knowledge of these gates in order to to tell what she should activate. And maybe even it might have been Zan who asked, "Well, what will we know?" And Imran just would answer, "Which was I will know." Ah. Uh. And that's where the um, Ashira kind of. Will you be going through the end of city? And uh, yes, I will. Bragg says, "Well, that's what they've got them for, isn't it? They're going down instead of the fire slayers." He seems a little sore about that. Then, um, this is definitely where Zam would make a comment. Sean just has to figure it out. Um, Zan uh, looks at, uh, he wants to, he, he likes this part of his job. He looks at Braga and he says, um, My friend, we are just more expendable than you. We'll lead the way. Uh, Sigmar will guide. And, uh, and, and he's like searching for, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, he doesn't remember it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it would probably be, I mean, if from the dwarves' perspective, the dwarves, or the dwarven at least, uh, are the uh, favored of the of Grimnir anyway, so. Grimnir, yeah. He yeah. Might, maybe he'd remember. I mean, he's a priest. He probably, uh, He probably uh, he would. There's not, to be honest, there's not, this isn't one of those settings where there's like just such a huge variety of gods, just really like 10 of them. So. Yeah. And Grimnir, my friend. Grimnir, because he's trying to connect with the man anyway. Yeah, yeah. The dwarf, the Dordan. And at the sound of Grimnir's name spoken by a non dwarden's lips, they all sort of look over at you. And Ashira is the one who quickly um, uh, inter interjects and says, well, well if, if you are intending on uh, going into the Undercity with your guide, I have some devices here. And she goes over to her table and begins collecting some of the things, places down a, a, something about the size of a backpack this is a bridge caster. It, um, when placed on the ground and activated, a series of interlocking plates extend from it, creating a platform uh, 30 feet long and 5 feet wide. They can be picked up at uh, this new point 
uh, but it will not be functioned on, again until loaded with new plates. So hmm. that. Uh, there is also the slow mine. It's a handheld device about the size of an apple that has a single button. When pressed, the device begins to activate uh, from the start of the next round when the creature when a creature enters the same zone as the slow mine or starts its turn there, it is stunned. At the start of each round afterwards, roll 1d6 on a roll of one or two, the slow mine malfunctions and stops working. After one minute, it malfunctions regardless and the effect ends. Um, so a when I say a zone, um, Age of Sigmar use, or uh, Soulbound uh, uses the same kind of idea of abstracted ranges, the way that like Conan or Fantasy Flight Star Wars or whatnot does. Close ranges uh, engaged, uh, short ranges in the same zone, medium ranges one zone over, long ranges two zones away, and so forth. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And the final thing is a... Uh, uh, transmitter. Uh, once you find the um, device, once you find the means to activate the portal, activate this uh, and it will alert us to the success of your goal and to your location. And she gestures any uh, or all of these are yours uh, to make use of. Huh. They're all car uh, carryable, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Bridgecaster is going to take the place of a backpack, but you guys aren't expecting to be down there in the Undercity that long. Um, the slow mine is about the size of an apple, so it's, it's a pretty small, you know, thing. Uh, and then ditto for the other thing. Like these, these are all small enough to be carried it like without uh, any significant um, inconvenience. So uh, Zan um, <clears throat> starts starts picking them up, starts uh, putting them in his pack Thanks. or donning the... He says, ah, well, uh, thank you kindly. This, uh, all of this I'm sure will come into handy. And looks at... Uh, Looks over at Vontus, says, yes, I think we are ready to go. Well, um, I wish, uh, uh, Ashira says, I wish you luck in the, in the explorations, Cadis says, and I wish you luck uh, in convincing <laughs> Shandos uh, to take you there. And you hear Braga say, or to catch him. And Vontus is sort of, Again, kind of growls uh, ever so softly. And with that, um, unless there's anything else you guys wish, Vontus then asks you to board the lift once again and then to return to the upper tier. Uh, so you will have... Uh, the, the trip up is a little slower than the trip down, so you certainly would have time to talk to Vontus or to uh, for Jan to speak to Imran if he so wished. <clears throat> I think yeah I think um, Zan has less inhibitions and um, will not hesitate to bring it up again they're alone Bontus' uh, feelings notwithstanding uh, says so it's one of them you think Bontus he nods and hmm. you'd best not trust Shandos either. Hmm. Presarium Shandos only cares for himself and cannot be trusted. He lives in the Undercity, obviously, then? None live in the Undercity, hmm. but through his schemings and his criminal endeavors. He's come to know it better than any. If any could bring you to the point to activate the gate, Shandos would be the one. And he turns to you this time 
As just to make the point, I do not trust him. Mm. He turns back. As Jan, you would know too, like there are, it's not unusual for people to be, you know, plying the depths. Uh, there are people who will quite easily die in the Undercity. And you lived mm -hmm. here before the Necroquake, so it probably was quite bad uh, before. Um, but it's it's not an it's not a common like it's not like a cottage industry of it. But there are people who can make you know who have uh, said to have made fortunes with what they found in the Undercity. To your ears, this sounds like this Shandos is but one of the latest you know on this uh, yeah. kind of uh, type. <clears throat> So uh, as the disc, or once the disc uh, reaches the upper tier, uh, he'll escort you out of the tower and he makes arrangements for a gyrocopter to carry you down to the Bright Market. And the Bright Market is, I believe, ooh, 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 ooh. Where is it here? I really love this map. That's nice. Yeah. Well, like I said, like there's just there's 71 places set in it, so like you could really have a fun, uh, yeah. you know, site based uh, campaign here because there's tons of different That's factions great. that are going on. It's great yeah. stuff in here, um, and it, the city of Mist has uh, the whole thing about Anvilmar as well too. And one of the neat things with the setting is because each of the different parts of the mortal realms is uh, has a realm gate associated with one of the different realms. They take on the characteristics of that. And I think Avalmar is near whatever the green one is, I think. Uh, so there, it's like fucking surrounded by jungle because it just keeps growing un, in an uncontrolled rate and they constantly spew out this um, uh, herbic like herbicide to try and keep oh. the, the jungle at bay from it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool stuff. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So the bright market is located... Right here, right here. Oh, it's actually color coded. <laughs> so this is the bright market down here. What he suggests uh, is that you'll find a presarium at one of uh, one of the taverns in the area, either um, the pickle de Freet, which is in. Uh, sorry, we e either uh, low uh, low stones, a place called low stones, which is in. I know the pickle de free is in the new city, and oh, and low stones is near the high port. Okay, so um, they're gonna drop you off in the bright market, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. But then it'll be the new city, which is over here. Uh, is that right? I think so, uh, which is where you'll find the Pickle de Freet, and then there is Low Stones, which is in, where is this here? Low Stones is actually in the Bright Market. So your first one you could check is in Low Stones is about there, and the Pickle de Freet, Oh, hold on. It's actually way over here. This is the new city. Hmm. Yeah. So one here, and then one over here in the new city. Uh, so the locations he might be. Couple places. Uh, he he is not certain which way. Um, yeah. Have you any questions uh, for Vontis before? Apart from his warnings about not trusting anybody. Have you been to the Undercity, Montes? Uh, twice. And those... How did you find it? <sighs> Dangerous. And he says it almost in like a wistful kind of like, those are the days kind of way. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Sigmar will guide. Sigmar and uh, Shandos, and he gives a, you know, he tries to give a, 
kind of cartoonish look on his face that matches uh, Vontus's uh, warnings. Yeah. And he looks down at you and he doesn't say it, but you can see he really wants to remind again, don't trust him, <laughs> you know. But mm -hmm. he makes the arrangement for the gyrocopter and then you guys are left uh, brought down. So Jan and Imran are, have an opportunity to have a chat as you're brought down to the, uh, to the bright district or the bright market. What is going through Jan's mind right now? I think Jan is, uh, let's see, well, um, I'll start with Emran. I think Emran's probably still thinking of the uh, Realmscape. Um, you know, that was the fact, that was, that caught her eye. Yeah, yeah. And Jan is, um, He, you know, well, in general, I think Emerin is a little, it, Jeanne is a little more of a person, 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 a people person. Yeah. And Emerin is a little more of uh, technical aspects that she likes more uh, things and technical and lore. And so Jeanne is thinking of Shandos. So he seems like a nut to crack, a, uh, yep. a, a, a Gordian knot to untie and yep. someone to see this would be a, this would be a fine catch for Sigmar. Okay. Um, so the Bright Market, I will tell you, is the um, busiest commercial district of Bright Spear. Uh, Sorry, the busiest districts of Bright Spear run the perimeter, dividing the old and new city, enjoying both the protection of the former and the unblocked light of the latter. Um, most shops are doubling as homes off hours are uncommon and the thunderous spectacle of a Kishian uh, bartering echoes across the bright spear morning, noon and night. So it's a very active area. Trade goods stores like the Prince of Batar service as many needs as possible through climbing, uh, though climbing aboard a floating Karadran airship to, per to peruse the stock uh, is its own challenge. Uh, more seasoned adventurers favor Firehawk expeditions for its traveling gear and weapons with specialty war gear traded discreetly in the back rooms. Aggressive haggling builds up an appetite and The Hook offers hearty meals with excellent service to both walk-in customers and those patronizing the adjoining inn. Many Dwarden sleep off their hangovers at Low Stones instead. That's the tavern that you're going to be going to where the prices are lower but the accommodations are laughably meager Fine dining establishments such as the Char Estate entwined among the hanging gardens invariably demand a reservation with access only being possible once per day. And those on the go, the food cart oils well, uh, travels the full length of the market, frying just about anything editable. The new storefronts open in the market daily and repeat visits are recommended to take advantage of the latest offers. Trade pioneers should prepare to get their hands dirty if they want to compete with the locals. So that is what to expect from Bright Market, a vibrant place. And I think that the way that it is described, um, the old city uh, in, the, in the lower tier, like if you look at the thing, it's constantly in the shade of the higher tier. So the Bright Market uh, almost like sees, sees a little bit of sun coming in because of where it, where it is on the very edge. Mm. Hence its name, the hot, uh, you know, thing. So yeah, um, it'll be underneath in the shadows, underneath the upper tier is uh, where you would be heading. But this is, I think the, the one thing I will say for all of their products, not just the um, uh, the Age of Sigmar stuff, but the, they do a great job of this in the Warhammer stuff too. The 40K and the fantasy, um, they have great, like, um, what he calls environmental scenes. Great mm. stuff just to so you, for picturing what the actual setting is like, as opposed to just like glamour shots of uh, heroes beating yeah, yeah. up monsters. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, as you guys land, uh, Imran, um, it's fucking hot here. 
So that would definitely be your impression and getting down into the choked alleyways of the lower tier uh, is gonna be a little more, uh, even more stifling than um, than being in the, uh, uh, in the, at least the open air in the higher tier. But Jan, I think this is probably not necessarily the bright market, but this is probably where you're from, right? Is yeah, the... yeah. Spend some so... time here, I believe. Mm -hmm. So what and do you... is still with us? Vontus has left you. They he arranged yeah. for a, uh, a gyrocopter to bring you down, and then is leaving it on on uh, for you guys to track down um, Presarium Shandos. I'll put that in chat so you. So now that I've thought of a critical question, is there any chance we would have asked him um, what Sh what uh, Shandos looks like? Uh, human, short hair. Uh, what he tries for as a mustache. If you check either of those destinations, they will know him. Very good. All right. Jan looks at uh, Emrin with uh, relish. Okay. Among um, among the teaming marketers, and says, "Let's go find Shando, shall we?" And and blunders in, okay. looking around in all directions. Yeah, so as you do, uh, you find um, it's a very uh, busy and very cosmopolitan place. Uh, so you find, uh, you know, Dwarden, Elves, uh, the, I can't remember what they're called, the Tree Folk? What are they called? What are they called? Oh, I accidentally put the other things away here. Come on, come on. They are the... <laughs> Sylvan Neff. How could I forget that? So you're making your way through here, and um, how does uh, Jan feel about being back down uh, in this area? Oh, it's, I think it's got to be... Um, well, you know, we haven't... <clears throat> I'll just presume that it was since the... Because uh, it would be... It would be very different, right, before and after the, the schism. Most after the Necroquake? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and worse, before? Or... We're, we're much worse afterwards. The, worse I, th I think after. you said the Necroquake killed like th three quarters of the population? Uh, so maybe, yeah. So before, like he has memories of... Um, it's making him probably nostalgic. Um, but then, then, of course, uh, it's not his natural... It's not his natural disposition to be uh, pessimistic, but he probably has some wistful sorrow that's inevitable. Uh, yeah. Would, I mean, being as, as boisterous and as outgoing as he is, do you think, he, like, in his youth, he would have frequented the Bright Market? Yeah, of course. Definitely I mean, I, sounds I, like know, one of those places that people, you yeah. know, it's active. And he, since he's gregarious, you know, since he's drawn to people, it's, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, so, I mean, the... One of the nice things with the uh, Bright Market from the sounds of things is that it is one of those places that has like, there may be some uh, some places that are seen as institutions, but even in your time, those would eventually, you know, sometimes would go away, but there's always something new in here as well. So of any place that um, in the city where you might be wanting, like, you know, when you go back to your hometown and you kind of see the changes there as that, and you're like, oh man, like this is different from what I, what, what really like I think of the, of the, the city or the town. Yeah. I think this is the place that would feel the most like your hometown because it's the place that is constantly subject to change. So yep. other things you've seen, the, the spear, the other districts from above, this is the place that feels the most like it was when you were here. Would you give us, please, and you know what else? Ooh, boy. Save for Cubicle 7 as well. Game Master screens for skill-based games Let's that have skill lists on them. Pretty fucking awesome. Nice. Uh, I think... For each of you guys, for Imran and for Jan, give us an uh, intuition uh, mind check or awareness mind. I think awareness is actually what I'm looking for. Let's see what the difference is between those skills. 
Awareness might be the one I actually want here. You know? So awareness uses your natural senses, intuition, the ability to sense the ambiance of an environment and feel the tension if something is wrong. Hmm, I'll say either. Either of those, uh, intuition mind or awareness mind. Let's see here. Each of our heroes will give you two chances at this. <clears throat> Imran, it, oh, let's see. yeah, Imran will be awareness. Okay. Uh, for a, for Imran, it's a difficulty of four. All right. Okay. Okay. And for, oh, that's great. And what's her focus? Can she get another success? She can. That's four successes nice. then. Fucking awesome. Nice. That focus point mechanic is really cool. Yeah, it is fun. Mm. It is. And I'm assuming the complexity is always one unless you say differently, Kevin. Is that how it's working? Uh, this is actually, a, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on afterwards. You want oh. more successes than, than, uh, than less. Okay. Now, um, for Jen, because it is, oh, that was it. Yeah, she, did you oh, roll? You know what? That's only because that that's correct. The, the numbers are correct. The name is wrong. And that's because oh, she switched I it. Can, yep. Got it. Okay. Okay. It's because I'm controlling two characters. That's yep. why it's. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So then for, for Jen, uh, the. Choose one of those two skills, but him, it's going to be the difficulty of three because he's used to sort of the the mess in here. Um, it's the same. So I'm just let's see. I'm just I'm I'm just kind of narratively. Um, yeah, think about. Yeah, we'll do two intuition because he's more emotional about sure. this. Yep. I buy that. Uh, D and three. Here we go. Oh, Zero. he's um, he's he's very emotional. Zero, about the, Zero. Uh, okay. So he is just sort of caught up in the uh, in, in, in the scene once again and, and kind of, you know, happy to be yep. back in his thing. Imran, however, Imran is much more attuned to what's going on. And you, Imran can tell that there is a coordinated group of four men who have started stalking you guys. Ooh. They did not immediately stop you as soon as you got out of your gyrocopter and made your way into the crowd. It is something that is made up as you're making your way through the various little mini. Like I, it, it doesn't sound like there's a like a grand bazaar kind of you know like sook kind of place. It sounds like there's a bunch of little you know uh, courtyards and whatnot that are given over to sales plus permanent residents and whatnot. And you're you kind of weave through the city. You're going through one of these alleyways when she realizes that. Uh, for the last maybe 10 minutes or so, as you guys are making your way towards Lowstones, uh, there are uh, four men who are most assuredly following you. Uh, two from behind, and then one sort of up ahead, and then one that seems to be, you know, it's that you lose sight of them as you're walking along, and then as soon as you get to an alleyway, and you can see down there, they're keeping pace with you. So I think uh, Imran looks at Zan and you know, Zan's pretty obviously lost in nostalgia. And, uh, and so Imran goes over and, you know, gives him kind of like say, have you seen those, have you seen them following us? And, you know, Zan says, following us? Do you think they want to hear about Sigmar? And uh, Imran gives him a look and says, sorry. And, uh, well... Here's what you can do. This is an interesting uh, uh, part, one of the interesting mechanics in the game. Uh, yeah. So she has, let's see here, uh, her mind is a four. She has one skill in awareness. Um, what she could do is help him. And what that does is you get to add one dice plus one dice for each rank you have in the skill. So someone who is quite good at something, helping someone else, the chances of them getting a success is much better than someone. It's not just the flat, oh, you get one, you know, one extra dice. So Jan, with the help of Imran, could make an awareness check with plus two dice. Okay. Yeah. And same thing, DN3. All right, DN3. And so awareness bonus two, it sounds like? Yes. Did you, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. He sees them. 
Ah. And this is, I have a illustration as well. What these guys kind of look like. So these, you would know colloquially as red caps. They don't appear to be welcome market, welcome, uh, welcome wagon. Mm -hmm. uh, they are going to probably try and mug you at some point. Uh, so Zan, Zan, I think as soon as he sees them, he, uh, uh, unfortunately, Sigmar's light has not reached all corners. And he, uh, you know, there's probably been men like this, obviously, throughout throughout the throughout time. And uh, he's seen, you know, he's seen these these types. Yep. Um, trying to pick on market. Well, folks. and that's just it. Like, if if they're not preying, uh, if they're preying on you, they have likely preyed on a bunch of other people before. Indeed. How does Jan feel about that? Uh, Jan thinks he should bring he should bring Sigmar's light to them. Okay. So what would you like to do? Um. Well, let's. Um, looks at Imran. Where should we do this? You think? And uh, so they put their heads together. And I think uh, she would know. You know this place better than than I. True. Um. Let's um, let's pick a spot where where they're going to have to close a little closer, or else uh, they'll lose us. Okay. So maybe there's a pinched alleyway that you know about, yeah. a place that kind of like steps go down, and then you have to. It takes a dog leg around, so there's sort of a like right. a lower square where you can easily focus them all in. Yep. And what do you do as you guys get down there? Anything you do as you're waiting for the red caps to arrive? <clears throat> Jan's getting excited about bringing some Warhammer light, Sigmar's Warhammer light to uh, the stubbornly unbelieving. He's gregarious. His, his gregariousness has a violent nature too. It's just not as <laughs> not as often. <laughs> <laughs> and he he stretches. You know he he gets his. I think you know he's a little bit he's a little bit caricatured always. So he's got his he's. He's whipping his Warhammer arm around, you know, like a pitcher might, you know, yeah. uh, kind of <laughs> getting excited. Okay. And um, uh, Imran? Oh, let's see. And I should, yeah, this is a good. I think good you can assume to... that you'd have probably one combat round uh, worth of time before you go. And you can spend metal to get an extra action uh, okay. as well. Good call. Good call. Let's see, okay. And I just want to check quickly, scan talents. Choose anything I need to, uh, all right. And then uh, check him. Yeah. Now get our initiative set up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, we haven't even, you know, I've, I've totally forgotten about Tala. My Griffon. Oh, yeah, your Griffon. I'm going to assume um, they, he's back. He's probably with the whatever right now. We'll just okay. see. Because you got two characters already. Like, we probably yeah, don't fair. need to have a third uh, in there. If you're that's desperate fair. to make use of him, then I'm, I'm fine with that. But for, for our yeah, first scrap, maybe he is uh, he's awaiting your yeah, return. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then let me check your... Jan, your initiative is not your strong suit. No, no, it's not a yeah, good call. I, I don't know how it would, um, I don't know how it works with, uh, is it, if it's possible for him to uh, start, you know, if, if he's the one that'll initiate contact, 
you know if that's possible i don't know uh by, by which you mean well here why don't we do this again unless there's any um you would have one round if anyone wants to cast any spells um for Imran, her spells have a duration of one round plus the number of successes she rolls okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's like cloying mists ghost the mystic shield Yeah. Oh, a mystic shield appears to be something you can target uh, someone other than yourself. It says uh, it at medium range. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, let's... Uh, let's see. Target's defenses increase one step uh, each uh, until the start of your next turn. Each additional success extends the duration by one round. What, uh, the way that you determine how hard it is, like difficulty to hit, is you compare the uh, the relative levels of the um, um, of the different like abilities, your offenses and melee, defenses, ray, a melee accuracy and defense, right? Yeah, and that tells you what the difficulty uh, would be. Um, yeah, she's going to cast Mag Mystic Shield on. Um, uh, yeah, on him, on um, okay. on Zan, I guess. So when when uh, you feel it's it's coming in, uh, why don't you give us? I, I think you can just click on the spell, and it will uh, cast properly, because it is a. Channeling mind channeling test, but it I think it takes account for that in your, in your spell. Okay. Nice. One success. Okay, one focus point. Let's see here. And that's, that's not a great roll. Jeez. No. One step for one. Do, do you want to soul fire that? Try and get fish for a better uh, result. Oh, this is for duration, right? Yeah, because the duration right now would be two rounds. It'll be next round and then one more round afterwards. Maybe that'll be enough, but... Yeah. Um spent metal. What do you think? Um Yeah, it's an interesting question of knowing, uh because the Soul Fire has like, for example, cheap death on it. You know, so it's a pretty it's a high, pretty awesome, yeah. Pretty high value. So you're wondering should you spend it on this, you know, that kind of a uh question and it's a little tough to get back you know it's not it's not like metal um, yeah so uh see i can see now uh, i could see that being a fun um decision of, of the uh, of the party right of where right. someone might be like yeah i'm gonna spend it and other people are like what because what well, for those listening at home like there's a neat mechanic in the game um where if you're spending soul fire the narrative meta currency that everybody shares in the party if everyone agrees to it then there's no issue you just spend your soul fire and it's fine if any one person says no i don't agree with this you still can spend it but what happens is the the uh, i get a point of doom which has an effect on the long-term story and triggers some other stuff so it's a it's a cool mechanic and um I'd like that it allows for you to just say, well, I don't think my character would be kosher with you doing that, you know, and not feel like you have to be a, a you know, that by uh, by disagreeing with the use of it means you're being a bad player. In fact, means you're being a great player because you're taking advantage of one of those uh, things that's going to thematically come back and, and uh, you know, pay off in the form of trouble, you know, with Doom. So, which is to say, I think she'll not bother. He's got it for, he has it for uh, two rounds at least. Yeah, let's let's leave it be. Okay. Then what does her mystic shield look like as a tide caster? Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, I, you know, I think it's, I'm, I'm hearkening to, uh, I'm hearkening to, uh, I think it's James's character that has a water shield. Oh, yeah, 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 Sally. Yeah. Ms. Dumer. 
Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, I think I think that's what it is. Like there's a there's a kind of a you know it come she's like swirling her hand and there's like a surf you know a, a building kind of a water surf that starts uh, forming forming near uh, forming near Zan, which is going to be interesting in uh, in Akshi or uh, the realm so close to Akshi that uh, it, water seemingly coming out of the the, the deserts to surround yeah, yeah. Jan. Uh, and it's at the end of that round of that initial, like right after she gets her casting picture, you're down, there's a set of stairs, dusty, covered. You can hear the noise of the bright market not far off. These four come running around the corner and very quickly draw their weapons. And so, I think they've discussed that um, Zan is going to try to uh, instill the fear of Sigmar in them. Um, okay. Uh, and you know, not not necessarily gently, but if that doesn't immediately work, then you well, know, let's, let's wait to his turn first. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I was just saying before they may have had a discussion. That's all. Before oh, about, about uh, for for Imran? Yeah. So what? Here's the way that uh, initiative works in the game: is it just goes by your score, uh, but you can choose to slow down. Um. Yeah, I was reading this beforehand. Let me double check in the core book. So I think I can't remember if you have to swap places with another character or if that's what if I'm confusing this with Forb Forbidden Lands. Because I've been I was reading both this week. And I am easily bamboozled. I think that might be Forbidden Lands, but yeah. uh, it sounds familiar. See if there's a hold action. Ooh, parlay. Oh, neat. So there's one called react. When you react, you prepare yourself to act when a specific event triggers. You must declare the trigger for your reaction and the action uh, you will take when it happens. This is the classic, if X, then Y. If the trigger for your reaction doesn't happen this turn you can proceed to the next round without taking an action so i think if you wanted to to properly prepare you could have readied an action and then asked someone perfect oh no hold on so if a trigger for your reaction doesn't happen this turn you can choose to proceed to the next round without taking an action, or you can take a different action, but act last in initiative order for the rest of combat. So the rounds are a discrete unit. You take your action during that time, you can't carry something over from one round to the next. So your initiative uh, definitely uh, goes off. C oh, but there is a CZ initiative one. You don't act this turn, but instead go to the top of the initiative order at the start of the next round. There, there we go. That's cool. What's the cost, or what's the nothing? That's just your action. Oh, which makes sense. So you know what? Like that's why don't we just do this? Then we'll put that. Shan. That makes sense. Yeah, because uh, Imran cast the spell. They would have been moving yeah. around the corner, and your action would have been getting ready. So they Fair could have around the corner. Awesome. They are at medium range. They are one zone away from you right now. Uh, Jan, you're up first. What would you like to do? He is casting Light of Sigmar. Ooh. Start off strong. Heck yeah. So what does Light of Sigmar do? It, um, let's see here. Uh, the uh, the Light of Sigmar. Uh, you draw upon the Holy Searing Light of Sigmar to burn your foes. Make a DN 5-1 soul devotion test. Oh. Enemies in your zone suffer one damage per success. When you use this miracle, you can choose to spend a metal to have the damage ignore armor. Right. In your zone. They are medium oh. range away, which means they are one zone over. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's see here. Well, then in that case... This is where um, you could do the react, though. You could wait and see, like, if they get into your zone, you could then take that action. Sounds good. Okay. So then uh, you are, uh, maybe your hazel eyes are now blazing with a fire of Sigmar waiting for these ruffians to come down. Yes. Uh, and then on Imran's turn, what's Imran doing <clears throat> while you wait? 
Imran is going to... She is going to... Uh, All of her see. spells have a medium range. Except for like Cloying Sea Mist and Ghost Light. And they're farther than that, you said, obviously, right? Say again? They're farther than that, right? No, no, they're at medium. Oh, they are at medium. Uh, yeah, they're one zone away. Let's... Ooh. Um, let's see. I am going to... Uh... I think... Uh... Arcane, well, should go big, should go Arcane Blast. Okay. And for for kicks, uh, for kicks, you know, I think in general she knows or they maybe chatted that Zan would prefer her to hold off until he has a chance to, and she's ignoring that and just part, part, you know, <laughs> pile, piling <good>. on the, <laughs> not waiting for anything, uh, Priest of Sigmar. That's awesome. Uh, so, and remember, there are uses. You're, you're going to get one point of metal back at the start of each round. So, definitely take advantage of those. I've got the handout here for what your metal can be used for. Take an extra action. Uh, use a talent or miracle. Uh, double your training or double your focus. You can spend as much metal per round as you'd like. Ooh, let's see. <clears throat> I think well, she might. Okay, blast. Yeah, she only has the one uh, metal, but... Okay, so Arcane Blast, why don't you cast that first here? Okay. Let's see. Um, but I should decide whether to spend a metal, right? Because it Correct, doubles your focus. That, that could double your skill dice, uh, it could double right. your focus, and I believe she's got to focus on channeling. Uh, yep, of one. Yep. Um, yeah, is that my... Ooh, boy, I could double my training, and training's two, so that'd become four. Mm -hmm. Wow. we do that. I think we gotta do that. <laughs> nice. So she, with the still the water swirling around there, she pulls it in, and go ahead and give us a roll with an extra two. <clears throat> okay. Oops. Oh my goodness. But, 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 you have a five in there. You got one five in there with your focus, you can make that a success. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, do you wish Look at that to... roll. That's a that's dog shit roll. Uh, you yeah. could spend soul fire and re-roll that. Wow. Um, that's a lot of dice. Uh, that's really gonna piss Zan off too. <laughs> Z Zan's gonna say no. Inrin's gonna do it anyway. And there's your do. There's your do right there. Go ahead. All so, right, so you yeah, got a one spent... soul fire. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, here it comes. Let's see. So with yeah. uh, and then with two extra. Oh uh, yep, yep. There we go. Wow. Are you kidding? Oh my That's god, crazy. you rolled five this time too. Oh, brutal. <laughs> No, hold on, let's, let's see about re-rolls. I don't know if this, yeah, yeah. it could be Savage World style where you get to right, take right, the better right. of the two, or it could be, and this is a pretty heroic game, or it could be PF2 style where you're stuck with your re-roll. Let's see here. I'm just curious if there is a, a re-roll oh, re dice, 132, here we go. So, because it doesn't expressly say, but I think because of the way it's phrased as being like you can reroll any amount of your dice that are used, it's changing the, the result of the dice. So, it must be that you have to take the one that it doesn't expressly say you can take the better of the two. So, you must have to take the second reroll. Well, you know, when I was a jackass because uh, I was a, I was a, a rookie. How about that? Because I should have kept the five. Let's, let's uh, say that. Of course. You know what? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's let's do this. Uh, why don't you just give us a 
uh, re-roll that once again, uh, but add one extra dice. So you'll have kept the five, and then you'll re-roll the rest. Okay. So you at least have a one success in this. Re-roll the next one, see how many you get. Well, no, there's... <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh my there's god. Look, look how many fives there are in that. I, I mean, know. It's I a know. six. Uh, that's a real hard, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, you did get one, which means they all uh, going to get hit for one point of damage. Um, yeah. Let me see. Does, he ar does it say if their armor counts? Or is I, I, I think it does, unless otherwise, you know, unless yeah, otherwise that... stated. Yeah. So so I, arcane... I don't think this. This one doesn't. Uh, this one doesn't negate armor. So, okay, okay. So then, what is their armor? Fortunately, these guys are not wearing armor. Ooh. So, what does it look like as I'm inflicting damage on these clowns? What's it look like as Imran's, uh Tide Caster Arcane Blast manifests? <clears throat> I think. Um... Yeah, it's going to be watery bolts. You know, watery firing out from the tip of her uh, staff. Yep. And they all yeah, are tearing around and like concussing and tearing at these guys. It must be the the desert uh, as well that's just causing more difficulty with the the tide casting. Yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. and she's already spent her metal, so she's oh, uh, you know what? I don't know where you're. Where the fuck did the. Uh, ha 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 ha! Interesting. Here we go. So. Blue bar is your metal, and red bar is your toughness. So uh, Imran is down to zero uh, metal now, but we'll get yeah. it back at the start of our next round. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, then it is um, mm, 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 the thug's turn. So they are first going to race down, and I think... We get a movement as well as uh, action, or is that your action? Here we go. Actions in combat. Oh, you can take a move action and you can take an action. So mm -hmm. they move at normal speed. So they're gonna they use their uh, move to go into an adjacent zone. So they all come racing down towards you, Jan, uh, after being hit like that, and then we trigger your reaction so excellent casting um he's casting where's his spells he is sigmar's light okay yeah light of sigmar okay or his miracle indeed his miracle right that's right invoking his miracle if you will okay. um he's got two metal yes he's got two metal but this is a reaction though uh so oh oh the oh, oh. Because it's not technically your turn. This is your reaction uh, to it. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Because remember, even though there's a two, like you're at the, uh, you your action was at the start of the round to create a reaction. I thought, yes, yeah, so you probably could spend metal to take another action immediately after. Hmm. So, but look, go ahead with your your um, miracle first. Let's yeah. see what happens. Okay. Well, I was, I was even, you know, just thinking about the same questions. Uh, double your training, double your focus, like this, that stuff. Oh, uh, yes. This uses, and, and this uses devotion? Is that right? It uses devotion. I think it costs you one metal to, to use it, too, doesn't it? It's a good that's a fair question. That's a fair question. Um, Let's see. Six. I thought it was. Uh, well, you can, oh, you can choose to use metal to have the damage ignore armor. Oh, there we go. So otherwise, it's just a roll. Just a roll. Okay. Looks like it. F a five one. Five one. Ooh. Go five, ahead. Uh, five one roll. Click on your miracle. Are you deciding on, uh, on spending metal? Um, metal. Let's. Yeah, let's spend a. Point to double the focus. Okay. Yeah. To double the focus. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Let's try it all. Heck yeah. Okay. Five one coming up. Okay. Okay. One success and two focus points. Uh actually two focus points would be enough to make that two successes. 
Yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. Pretty awesome. There you go. Boom. Okay, uh, oh, remember to click on this, the actual miracle. The miracles are down near where the spells are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll, just, uh, we'll take that as your result, though, and then click yeah. on the miracle. Let's see what it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Nice. Oh, it didn't, it didn't, oh, it doesn't uh, actually roll for you? It doesn't actually roll, that's strange. Maybe it's... Uh, that's weird. It is weird. Huh. Maybe there's something in the... Uh, I don't know, yet. Let's see. Hmm. Xi'an. Uh, that's weird, huh? It's weird. All right, well, uh, let's see here. Is uh okay? So hmm. lightest sigmar actually does cost one metal. Oh, but you okay. can spend extra oh, metal. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And this again on the uh, on the like gatefold character sheet, it doesn't say that, but on the yeah. typed up character sheet, it does. I'm checking, uh, hold on, I'm gonna check on Sigmar, right here, Sigmar, Sigmar the God King, checking your miracles in the core book to make sure that's what it is, because it seems like they've got it written two different ways. Well, where the heck are the miracles, though? Come on, miracles. Ah, here we go, on page 93. Easy enough. Here we go. Um, Miracle of Sigmar. Light of Sigmar costs one uh, metal to activate, uh, and you can also spend a metal to have the damage ignore armor. So, uh, well, I, you know that'll well that'll that's fine. That'll take up both of my metal because I spent one for the for the focus, yeah. double the, and then we spend one to activate it. You know, so excellent. Yeah, uh, one damage for success. Fantastic, that's two points of damage. What's it look like as uh, these things come racing in and Jan calls on the power of Sigmar? Uh, it's gotta come out of the Warhammer. I think that's probably, so it's, whoosh, you know, it goes shining out and, you know, it's it's the um, involuntary shielding the eyes and, and it kind of sears uh, yeah. the, you know, yeah, it sears the, the flesh. So they go from being hammered by water to scoured by the <laughs> yeah. uh, wrath of Sigmar. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so as they run down, let's see here. Uh, this is, I've got, the GM screen is also fucking awesome for having a uh, color-coded chart. Look at this. For oh, nice. Comparing the difficulties of things. Uh, uh, so, let's see here. I have to get that out. I've got Diffic the, oh, the Difficulty by dice pool. Hold on, I'm, I'm got this. Yeah. Oh, something different. Here it is. Here's what I'm looking for. All right. So your um, your defense is uh, raised by one because of the water. What is your defense? Jim. Oh, I guess I, I can. I have bonuses. I'll I'll try that. I'll give one to the, his defense. Yes, yeah, so your bonus section. Your defense is a. Oh yeah, right. So average. So it should be good now, right? My defense is uh, good. That is cur. Uh, let's see. For some reason, it's already marked as good. Is that correct? That doesn't strike me as correct. Let's it, see. It's marked as good now? It's marked as good now, but I don't think that's right. Let's check it. Let's uh, no, it should be average. It should be average. According to the character, according to the character sheet that you put in the- Yeah, yeah. So you got your, I don't know why that is that way. Oh, wait, wait, you know why? No, I'm wrong. I th Yo, no, I'm right. It, I, I, so, well, here's what happened. The actually sheet is correct. It's it's average, but remember I just said, oh, I'll, I'll put this in the bonus section and let's see what happens. It moved it up. That's what I thought. Okay, great. That's okay, fine. so they are, it is their good versus, uh, oh, here we go. So their attack is average versus good, which means uh, one step lower so dc so their difficulty number is a five to attack you and this is the kind of thing i imagine you would get very like would become shorthand very quickly you wouldn't constantly be looking back at the chart for this stuff yep but 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 but, but let me set this aside for a second okay i have so i need a five to hit you let's see we got those stilettos out Ooh, interesting 
damage type means anything in this game. Let's see here. That's not a trait. Mm, interesting. Okay, here we go. Uh, so you have five. So the, and they're all coming in on you, Jen. Uh, so we got. To, let's see here. First one. Uh, that stiletto is coming out. I got one uh, success, so it'll be two points of damage. I think, what's your armor? Jan's armor is, I think, a one? It's a one. That's what I have. So you'll take one point of damage. Okay. First one. Uh, ooh, two points of damage from the second one. Nothing. Uh, oh, wait. Mm. What is that? Uh, five. I need a five to hit you. So that's uh, uh, one point of damage from the third and nothing from the fourth. So four total? Four total that get through your, your armor, yeah. And I'm looking right now for uh, where that... Oh, wait. Uh, you, under, you know what you can do in your token? It'll update to your character sheet. Okay. Let me... I got sheets all over my screen. Hang on. Yeah, that's um, right, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm down to four, right? Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Then it is a round two. Jan, you're up first. Uh, so you get one medal back. Oh. And what would you like to do? Right. I, um, let's see. I think his, oh. I will check and see what the cost of metal is, because you've got that healing one too, right? Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna yeah, double check. check. That's good call. I, I don't on the character sheet it did not show that as costing. Um Right. Let's see here. Healing is it healing spirit? Uh yes. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Uh Pirate yes. God washes over you and your allies and heals your injuries. Uh does not cost a metal, but you can choose to add to spend a metal to add your soul to the amount of toughness recovered. Um, otherwise, I just get my successes back. Otherwise, you get your success back, your successes back in uh, in that, yeah. And it looks like... My soul. Ooh, interesting. Go ahead, what were you gonna say? Yeah, well, as you say, it looks like it's the zone, so it targets yourself and everyone in the zone. Yeah, All so your allies in the zone, not, not everybody, just your allies. Cool. Yeah, she's not down, but otherwise, uh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. big. So, Jen, mm, decision, decision. You use that decision. That metal to juice up your healing, or you use that to take an extra action? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I forget about the extra action. That's a good call. Yeah. There is an action uh, called defend uh, as well that I believe. I was just looking at that. Yeah. It's or on the dodge. screen, too. Until the start on of your next screen. turn. Uh, Increase your defense by one step and add one d6 to your dice pool for body reflex tests. Yeah, I think let's do it. Let's try that out. He, um, he, uh, yeah, he takes. Uh, he's going to do that. He's going to defend himself and cast the healing of Sigmar okay. on him. So okay. Uh, uh, and he is going to spend a medal on the healing because uh, that will heal him up. Well, the thing is, that's th that he couldn't do two actions. Because defend is an action. Oh, defend is another one. I'm sorry. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Good point. I, I was thinking it was... Uh, gotcha. I was thinking of it wrong. Uh, 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 uh. Mm. I think that... Uh, yeah, let's stick with it. He's going to do healing, you know, without the defend. He'll do okay. healing. Then does he want to spend the metal to juice that up? Yes, or, he's going to juice that up because that will heal him up. Yep. Okay. All right. And Imran's uh, shield uh, still lasts for one more round, too. Okay. So, right. and we know now that you're uh, clicking, you got, uh, clicking on the, what do you call it? The uh, spell. Uh, d yeah, Miracle doesn't do anything, so go ahead and give us a devotion check. Oh, right. Yep. Yep. All right. And I think it's DN. Oh, I'll, I'll put it in there anyway. Put yeah. that there. DN5 for the uh, healing spirit. Oh yeah, perfect, there you oh. go. Yeah. Okay. There we go, come on. There okay. you go. And you got one okay. focus, come on. Nah, that's a one. Yeah. Uh, so that will be five 
you recover. What does the healing that power of Sigmar look like? Um, you know, I think from that hammer, like it's this sort of, it's a, it's an angry yellow that comes out and you know hits the the anger of Sigmar, yeah. and then it goes whoosh and it comes back and now it's kind of a golden hue that you know showers him. Incredible um, with this blessing. All yeah. right, uh, then it is Amran's turn. What is she doing? And let me get his uh, wounds toughness on. back up. Good to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah toughness, right? Toughness. Oh, uh, she gets her metal <clears throat> back as well. Oh, nice. Yep. Get a little metal. Take that. Um, I think uh, in her thoughts, she's looking over like, don't worry. Okay, fine. I've got it. You know, as he's like healing himself, you know, <laughs> they still come. Yeah. Um, they've got a little of that, uh, you know, Oscar and Felix. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <clears throat> um, let's see. So now the question, uh, let's see if her... Uh, this will be the last shoot. round that uh, Jan's Mystic Shield will be up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's true. I guess she could. She could wait till next time to recast that, perhaps, in her mind. Um, let's see. Looking at her spells here. That cloying sea mist is interesting, but it's awfully tough. Five three. Which one's that? The, uh, cloying sea mist that can incapacitate them. Oh. Um, but but it's a five three roll, oh, yeah. so it's tough. It's up. It's a, a three successes. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And then. Uh, it's got to the, be in her zone. Are they in her zone yet? Where are they? Where? Sorry. Uh, how far away are they at this point? They're they're all in the same zone as both of you right now. So like okay. they're That's what they're engaged yeah. with um, uh, Shan, uh, but not engaged with uh, Imran yet. Um, maybe we give it a shot for kicks. It's a little bit high risk because it's tough. It's really tough to succeed. But then, but then it's pretty, it's pretty serious because they could become incapacitated, and it's a, uh, it's uh, everyone in the zone. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Cloying Sea Mist. Let's see how it goes. Okay. I was looking at magic. Let me see what. Uh, if, is it? Uh, spells of the Deep. Pretty cool. 280. That is cool. Okay. Cloying Sea Mist. Oh, I'm just gonna check what the it says a five S. I wonder if that's um, net okay. successes or if it is uh, what the success of the spell is. Let's see here. Ah, so what you know what yours says uh, the it makes us a, 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 a check against difficulty five or four and then S. S is one plus your successes over what you needed to cast it. Mm. So that's effective with like if that's the game's version of a saving throw. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh so I'm gonna spin the metal. I'm getting I'm starting to get the hang of this. I'm gonna spin the metal on um on uh, doubling the training. Okay, nice. So we're rolling extra B bonus two dice on yep. the training, yep. Because she has two in it, so it's a nice bonus there. In her training. Okay, there we go. So I'm take, taking the spell casting bonus of two. Mm -hmm. There we oh, go. Oh, 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 man. There we go. So let's see here. And you got... It's a difficulty of five. Uh, so you got a four nice. in there. So that's another success. That's six, six. successes. A that's net what of I'm three. About. They need four... Uh, or they become incapacitated for one round. Okay, nice. so let's take a look at the thing for incapacitated. Uh, 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 conditions. Can't move, take actions, or spend metal. Can't defend themselves. The DN to hit an incapacitated creature is always two. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's see here. I need to roll a fortitude uh, uh, check for them then. 
or test. Uh, they do not have any points in that, so this is just body. Oh boy. Uh, against A, and I need... I don't think I can possibly do this. Because I need uh, four successes. Yeah, so every single one of them. Tell us what it looks like as Imran, you know, shifts her, her water magic to choke these guys out. Yeah, I think, so it's... um. It's that, you know, it kind of looks like mist, but it's really wet mist. Yeah, so yeah. it's like going into their, their cho yeah, they are. It's like, it's the kind of thing where you think it's going to be more foggy, but no, it's more watery. And so they're like, <laughs> and it goes into their mouth and they're, you know, they're like, they can't, you know, it's like food going down the wrong pipe and they're all coughing and gagging and, and, uh, and she's already thinking about how pissed she's going to be when when Zan credits Sigmar for this, and uh, and so they're you know they're on one knee, kind of going down. And wow! Now hold on, uh, I'm going to check one thing because actually the version in the core rulebook is even more badass. Hmm. So. <laughs> I love a well-written rule book. Um, here's the thing with Cloying Miss. Um, it also, each additional success extends the duration by one round, and it clarifies it they are incapacitated until the start of your next turn. Oh. So that means it's not like end of the round or whatnot too. But the reason I say I like a good written, uh, a well-written um rulebook because that is an overcast ability when you cast when you roll more successes than you need for it uh those things become things you can spend on overcasting to get extra nice. abilities or whatnot but that's fun the difficulty of driving up the target number for their toughness checks it expressly says these additional successes can still be used for overcast effects wow so it makes it nice. clear that you're not making the decision of like difficulty to save or right. whatever which it's means nice that's the only extra overcasting ability you've got on this. That means this is going to be four rounds that these fuckers are helpless and will need only a two to hit them. Nice. So yeah, they're just like coughing and choking and trying to get the shit out of their throats. Uh, they yep. do nothing this round. And there are three more rounds. I'll start counting it down. Three more rounds until this spell ends for them. Jan, you're up next. You get a medal back. And you can see every one of these guys is staggering around, choking on this watery tendril that seems to have come from uh, the end of Imran's staff. What are you doing? Is there a choice of, um, <clears throat> is there a non-lethal you know, option, do you think, in this game? This is a Warhammer game. Do you genuinely okay. think Check that it. a god? The reason is because, as a, um, yeah, I wasn't sure that he, he was going to, he was going to kneecap them instead of, uh, Skull yeah, him. I think that was the. I, 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 I think with the, with the way heroes are supposed to be in this, if you choose to just like cripple these guys or otherwise yeah. just defeat them, I, I don't think you need to kill them. I, I'm not. Uh... That was his. Uh, that was the uh, thought. Yeah, yeah. Here, let's see here. Um... You know what? Let's just say that because these are are there uh, are. Um, like minion type rules in the game as well, and these guys are effectively those, so they're just defeated as soon as you uh, reduce their toughness. So, what would you like to do? Um, he is going to uh, brush a guy in the knee with. Uh, are you saying it's over? Over? I don't need to. Uh, should I? I? I'd like to hit a guy in the knee if we're still. Oh, in the knee. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So no, no call yeah. shot or anything like that. Just go ahead and give us an attack. Difficulty on this nice. one: a two because nice. they are completely incapacitated by Imran's spell. Because of Sigmar. <laughs> because of the magic of the deep, but sure, Sigmar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here, Warhammer, here we go. All right. There we go. go. All right, so that's two successes. You got one focus point. Uh, focus point, oh yeah, yeah, that, that one could become a two. So yeah, yeah. three successes. Uh, so what's it, the first one? He just fucking bust his leg. Uh, you want to spend your medal for an extra action? Of course, he's the fucking timekeeper. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is really the love of Sigmar. It's tough love, but it's love. Yeah. 
So go ahead for your second attack. All right. Here we go. Same, same thing. Same. Whack, whack. <laughs> Two are down. And it is Emran's turn. Uh, these are and stuck. he does it gleefully with love in his heart. It's a strange love. But it's, uh, you know, he's like, ah, 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 I'm going to have that Depeche Mode song in my head for the rest of the night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are certainly yeah. worse songs to have uh, caught in your head. Yeah, no doubt. No uh, doubt. So Imran gets her medal back. And then what would she like to do? Let's be here, taking the medal. There we go. Um, she... She was going to do shield, but at this point it's looking pretty good. So mm -hmm. instead of that, she is going to. Um... Yeah, she's not too. She sees what he's doing, but she's not too worried about that. She's just going to zing a guy. She's going to, you know, hit fire a water bolt at it. Yeah. Uh, not really worried whether he lives or dies. Yep. Um. Uh, that looks like arcane bolt is what we're looking at here. Okay, is she using her metal for... Yeah, let's do it. Let's spell um, again? double one or the other. Boy, it's hard not to with that training too. Uh, yeah, let's stick with it. It's too tough not to. We're going to double the training. Okay. Take that. I guess the other option would be to cast two spells. Wow. The extra action. I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. I like it. Let's do that instead. Let's let's kick all the tires. Okay. Let's uh yeah, yeah. Um all so right, then, yeah, two one yeah, bolt. Arcane bolt I think up. is a difficulty four. So it's it's yeah, a yeah, much yeah. easier spell to cast. Yep. Four one. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so and can, will that can that focus point hit the other one? Oh, there's no, no three in there, so no, but no, okay. uh yeah. Yeah, six so yeah. What does it look like as she now focuses her tide casting spells on a bolt? Um, yeah, you wouldn't think water would behave that way, but you know, if you're dealing with a tide caster, it uh, it makes a hole. It forms yeah. a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And then your second yeah. arcane bolt. Go ahead. Yep. There we go. There we go. Three successes. That's four damage. Oh. So, with the moaning of the two left in the alleyway, uh, uh, grab their knees, but the other two pierced <laughs> by water. What do we see? So Zan is going to jump. Is was jumping to the third one, you know, to, to yeah. give the love of Sigmar, and I, then that last bolt just, you know, just in, you know, yeah. 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 Uh, creates a hole and he looks at and he looks at Imran. Oh, and you know Imran rolls his eye, rolls her eyes, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and and you know and then they they're both looking around to make sure that um, you know all all foes are accounted for. Yep, these are the four. Um, Imran is absolutely certain that these were the four uh, that were pursuing them, and they have that. Um, I believe there is actually a, a like a gang called the Red Caps, so they are likely part of uh, that. I want to say that um, I want to say that Zan has some calling card, maybe just a, you know, just little. He has a bag of uh, you know maybe Sigmar symbols, you know, kind of like a priest leaves a business card in the modern day or something. Just you know, puts it on there and says, you know, child, Sigmar is is the answer. And uh, on the two live, two live, sure. on the two living ones. Yeah, and coins um, in this are actually they're neat. They're, I think you can use them as healing. Uh, things as well like they're they're, 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 they're at, like everything in this setting is suffused with magic of one kind or another oh, nice so yeah if you leave those behind for the two surviving ones um that would be yeah very kind of you sigmar uh, child sigmar so if you check at lowstones what you find uh lowstones is a tavern and attached hostel uh that is run by a retired dwarden prices are low the accommodations are Spartan, and unfortunately, with a, a little bit of subtle looking around, uh, you did have um, the gentleman you're looking for, uh, Prezerium Shandos, is a human, and it is all Dwarden in here, right now. Ooh. So it appears that it'll be the Pickle de Frit that you're looking for. 
And, and do we already know where that is? We saw it, right? Yeah, you know the pickle de frito. I can actually show you on the. Give me a sec here. I can show you on the map. So where you are right now is right about here. Yeah. And that is right over here. Uh, so it'll take you a little bit to get over there. Um, but uh, yeah, the pickle de frito is is definitely. Uh, 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 unless um, your um, friend is 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 wrong, uh, you'll be heading into the new city. And actually, I have yet another illustration for you. Here, the new city looks like. Where did I put it? No, 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 no. I loaded it. Where did I put it? Hmm. Hmm. Let me check one thing here. I know we're close to the end of session anyway, but let's. Yeah, we got 20 minutes. Let's see if I can. I maybe just overlooked it when I was loading. I could have sworn I. Uh, Crap on a picture because the, the the entrance to the new city is actually pretty cool and different from the others. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. There's the lower tier. There's that. There's that. Well, I got. I guess I, I forgot to. I either forgot to save it or I say the wrong thing. Hmm. Okay. What I can do. I hold it up for you. It's, it's just, it is kind of, it's a neat looking thing. There's a giant uh, wall. Here is with a new city. No. Oh. Mm hmm. Oh. Massive things of, uh, to honor Sigmar and the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, I've already forgotten the name again. Storm, uh, Stormcast Eternals. Nice. But, 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 let's see here. I will make use of another illustration I had. Let's do this. Just because this is, I didn't use this for you before, but it's a neat insight into the, um, what it's like to be underneath the, uh, the high tier. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Illustration. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, nice. but, uh, and then you can see all these, uh, like, propaganda things for the Stormcast Eternals all in here, too. Uh, the jagged. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So this would be sort of uh, very much closer to what it would be like where the, your ambush uh, took place. Uh, but, mm -hmm. so I'll go back to here once again, and you make your way into the uh, new city, there is something that occurs to you. What was it that um was it Braga? The uh uh the Dwarden. Dwarden? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Braga Coppertoe. What did he say to you? Don't let him run. What do you think he meant by that? He said it to uh uh to Zan. He said it to you, Zen and Imran, because they were talking about when, uh, you know, about finding um, Shandos. And he had said something about, uh, about something to the effect of him running away. Of Shandos? Yeah. I mean, he's hmm. definitely the, um, you know, the CD type. Uh, and hmm. not everyone who's, who's, uh, Tress in the robes of Sigmar, who's looking for the CD type, is uh, looking for them f uh, to employ them, right? Uh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. So he's probably avoiding us. Could be. You haven't checked this one, but. Um... Here, let's see. Uh, unless there is anything you wish to specifically. Uh, do as you approach the uh, pickle de frite. 
Ooh, I think I've got, I can give you a little block tax on the pickle to freet. Yeah. All right, diggity damn. Let's see here. Bring it. The pickle to freet, uh, this reclaimed Aglaro, uh, Aglaroxy, uh, Aglaraxian ruin near the lower tier suggests a better class of tavern with polished glassware and modern furnishings decorating a single story structure. But these are recent purchases, spoils of a wager in which the owner consumed a dish made with the noxious dappled ifrit uh, and somehow didn't catch fire. The fine accoutrements cannot disguise the true heart of the establishment. The Pickle of Freed has always been a favored haunt of mercenaries, smugglers, and ne'er-do-wells. And however earnest the attempts to go legit, there is plenty of dark business still conducted within these stone walls. The Pickle de Freed's notoriety is both a blessing and a curse. Visitors are as likely to find drunken... Uh, are as likely to discover leads from underworld contacts as fight in a drunken brawl with a fire slayer or get caught up in a free guild raid. Of course, for a particular breed of soldier of fortune, these mishaps are part of the charm. Nice. I'm gonna give you sort of a sense of the neighborhood. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> cool. So, as you're heading in, um, what are you thinking? Is there any uh, strategy you have in mind, or are you just going to walk in and try and find uh, the dude? Well, we get our metal back, right? Metal is uh, restored. Yes, all your metal is back. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um, Another point, uh, actually, what's worth mentioning is uh, there's also a resting mechanic. Uh, take a breather. When you take a breather, you spend 10 minutes resting, and your toughness returns to its maximum. Okay. Mm. Um, I mean, between the two of us, not neither like neither are subtle as per se. Emrin probably a little. I mean, she's tall though, but you know, um, probably stands out less than the preacher. So um, you do seem a little earthy, and you certainly yeah. don't seem like you're a scoundrel. But right, you could try. Let's see, where's the the old game master screen. What on earth did I do with it? I wonder if there is, here we go. There's a skill you could try. Stealth, right? Guile. Probably. Guile. I think they both are terrible at that, but why not? Let's see what- uh, It uses mind what... for guile. Just... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, she's clever, she's clever. He's more, um, you get what you, you get, you see what you get, but um, you get what you see. Yeah. But uh, she's clever. Yeah. I think she'll she'll try to uh, she'll try to pull it off. Like surreptitiously make her win. Yeah. Yeah. Zan will um, Zan will hang back. Okay. Are there windows? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. With a place that's that's uh, mm. fancying itself a bit of a a fancy joint. It, like it's, it said in the description, I'm picturing it's a place that's got like you know nice glassware and whatnot too, but it's it's set up in such a way so that it's still fairly, it's just well-dressed scoundrels who happen to be hanging out here. Yep, so Zan's gonna look for a window to kind of keep an eye that nothing completely crazy goes down. You know, sure. to, yeah. so when to show up. If he, if she needs the Calvary. Um, that he'll be within, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, with a zone thing, I think you're, you can be at like medium zone and, uh, yeah. and be able to head in. Um, so Guile's the ability to be charming in order to convince others to see your viewpoint. Yeah, I could see that Guile would be the thing you would use to try and ask around. Stealth is the physical, like, remaining un, uh, unseen, but unseen. he uses body, though. So Zan, and that's your, isn't that your shtick or spirit your shtick? Soul. Soul is his well, Soul is not spirit. I'm thinking of um, DC Heroes. DC Heroes oh, yeah. has those like three tiers and three tiers of, of stats in it, and the bottom one uh, is uh, bo uh, body, mind, spirit. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, her being guily, I think is 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 sure. Workable. So yeah. go ahead and give us a guile uh, check, please. All right. Let's see, guile. Uh, do I do I know what the the uh, do I oh yeah yeah sorry in? the difficulty uh, be a four. All right. 
Yeah, got one. Got one. Okay. So tell me, uh, what, when she walks in there, there probably are, um, you know, uh, dark, what do they call them? Not dark elves. Uh, there are, um, there's a gang of dark elves that are, that are in here. Mm. Um, the witch elves. Canine mm. witch elves. Badass. Okay, uh, you see some of them in here, and they're kind of like the, uh, they're, they're the soul, you know, a soul bound equivalent of uh, Dark Eldar, basically. So lots of dark leathers and stuff like that. Shit that's, sh you know, uh, sharp looking. Uh, some of them sitting with some, you know, sketchy looking Dwarden. There's some humans in here. It, the place, it just, um, it reeks of um, everyone having their own kind of secret conversations with one another, but in a very open and bright kind of way. This isn't, you know, dark uh, booths behind, you know, with people yeah, 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 whispering to one another in booths. Um, as you um, walk in, there is a, a human who walks up as the, maybe the hostess. Get the good afternoon, ma'am. Are you joining Hello. someone or just yourself? Well, I'm not sure yet. Someone may be joining me shortly, but um, I'm here to, I'm here for a drink. Drink? Uh, she gestures at the bar. Would you care to sit at the bar or would you care for a table to wait for your... I guess a table out of the way a little bit would be best for me, if you have it. Something away from the light, perhaps? Um, if she did get it away from the light, Kevin, would would that still afford a view of who's in the tavern? Yeah, I would. I think it's her comment may be more. You're you're probably quite pale because you're um, an elf who you know lives underwater, right? Primarily, yeah, so because yes, that would be perfect. Thank you. So she'll bring you over and sit you down. You can feel free to pr press her for a little bit of information. You did get a success on on your guile, if you'd like. Um, say I'm, um, and there's, does she, we have, she has coins, right? We have, um, yeah, okay, that's a good point. So I was just double checking in the lid. So the way that the currency is something called, uh, Aqua Giranus. Um, mm. 100 drops equals 10 files equals one sphere. One drop mm. of Aqua Giranus restores one toughness. Huh. A file of uh, Aqua Garanus restores 10 and removes one condition, and a sphere restores all toughness, removes all conditions, and reduces the severity of a wound. Well, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you're mentioning that. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they're, they're, um, they're described as drops, but I guess they're, you can, you can. You spend them, yeah, yeah, like you spend them like currency as well. Um, and to give you an idea of the says, purchasing power in the starter set, they give you, uh, like, a dagger would cost you 20 drops. Ooh. Uh, a inn in a common room, oh, sorry, a common room in an inn would be 20 drops. A private room that sleeps two would be 80 drops. A glass of spirits is six drops. So that gives you some idea of what the purchasing power she, is of the stuff. She apparently has 200. Does that seem? Yep. That's right. Yep. She will, um, it's kind of an upscale place. Um, she'll offer, uh, Ten drops. Okay. So here's and what I'll, I'll tell you about another mechanic that, that I, I think is neat in the game. Uh, yeah. It's called uh, so advantage, um, advantage and disadvantage. But it doesn't function like the fifth edition version. What it does is it adjusts the difficulty number, so that the DN goes down by one. So if you're bribing this girl, uh, what I was looking at a moment ago is what you rolled. 
if your DN goes down by one, that means you got two successes out of this, not mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Ten drops. Okay. She, and um, no, it's, well, thank you, ma'am. Of course. I'm looking for looking for a um, a new acquaintance, and I'll describe. Um, sh I'll, you know, obviously, you didn't give a great description, but I'll describe Shandos um, as best you can. Human and mustache, um, maybe a. Uh, right, this is what he said. This is what uh, Vontis yeah, yeah. told yep. me, right? Yep. Um, yeah. Um, he is a... Um, i trying to think of a different description for smuggler. He's uh, he, he, he purveys in um, unusual items. Give her a look. And... Uh, she, so she... Uh, having pocketed your, the drops that you, you uh, or it would be a um, file, I guess, uh, because you. Oh, God, yeah, ten, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she pockets it and she says, You know, this table is not. I think we have something better for you. She brings you over, sits you down, you know, kind of gives the, uh, the menu and kind of looks at you knowingly. Enjoy your meal. And as she walks away, you see that you are sitting, like, one table over from Prezari and mm. Shandos. Uh -huh. Who seems to be over his meal, and he's sipping on some wine, um, finishing up a meal, and he's got that kind of feral look of looking around. He doesn't seem to have noticed Imran yet. So with Jean outside... Imran inside, having found your guide to the Undercity. That's where, unfortunately, we got to bring this session to a close. <laughs> so, right on. Yep. So this is a first time playing, uh, for me, first time running. Uh, is this your first time playing it, or have you played it before? Yeah, yeah. No. First time playing. So what are your thoughts as, uh, as a player? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it's um, and getting a... You know, it takes this to get an idea of the setting because I, I didn't have any um, preconceived, you know, some, some um, you know, if you're going to play Lord of the Rings, you've, you've already got the gist, you yep. know, you've got yeah, some, yeah. Uh, you, you got to, and this one, yeah, like you, I think you mentioned, I have, I really had no idea um, other than what I expressed at the beginning of the session of just some very, very broad strokes, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's good. It's good to get, um, it's good to get a little taste. And uh, I thought the uh, system it was cool. It's got, it's got, um, you know, it's got a few little moving parts to keep you engaged as far as uh, difficulty, complexity, and yep. using that metal all the time. Well, and, you play and... two characters as well, right? Right. right. So, like, you're yeah. controlling two, uh, two new characters new to you before we started the yes. session, and in the game that's new to you as well. Yep. Yep. That's it's all it's that's you know and they're different kinds obviously of although they've both got you know one's got miracles but um, yeah a magic user and um, and a priest so they both got a little extra a little something something to try to get your uh, arms around so you can use them use their powers yeah appropriately it was fun yeah the, it was good the metal yeah, uh, it is I really like uh, the way that yeah. felt that was really yeah. neat having that extra especially with being able to. Uh, squeeze the extra action out of it or make the one action that that felt yeah that seemed to feel really fucking good yeah and, and uh and it's interesting how much i mean that's about as um that's about as available as a meta currency gets that you get some every round back like that is that is that's maximum you know um and I can, it's interesting, you know, since, since we had neither of us, I, I, you know, you neither perhaps have made a character, you know, that's a, that's kind of a big deal of your maximum medals a little interesting too. You know, she's got one and Zan's got two, Yeah. but between both, you know, those are big things, the training, the focus and the extra action option each time. Um, and then you may have to soak one up because of you want to utilize a talent or a miracle that calls for it. But yeah, that's a lot, you know, that's some good stuff going on there. You've got some things to decide. Mm-hmm. And it, it felt like you had, uh, between the, like, a, a good, um, like, a robust uh, combat action uh, table uh, and what's on your character sheet, like, it did definitely feel like you had some cool things to do each round. Yeah. You know? So here's, yep. yeah, combat action. Uh, yeah, like, retreat, run. Yep. 
Uh, I like the dodge mechanic. Uh, oh, defend. That's a neat one, too. Yep. Uh, to keep an ally safe? Like, that's... that's. I don't think I've seen that as a default action in any game. Oh, and they're all yep. car there are called shots here. Look at that. And oh. a charge and help. Yeah, it's... So, like, even at default, there's a lot of neat uh, tactical stuff you can do. Yep, shove. And yeah. that, that CZ initiative is kind of cool. Like, the way they, the that way they handle really it. really neat. Yeah, yeah. Because especially yep. for a slow character, like that, that was a neat way of, like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the... T I'm fucking acting first next turn. And then yep. get, get us back into... Uh, you're sacrificing one to just get reorient yourself. Well, look at that. If you flee, uh, the doom increases by one. Hmm... Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah. And then on top, and like, there's, there's so many options for building the character too. Uh, I like that you're, because so much of the, um, the skills uh, seem to, at least at, at these low levels, like starting characters, they seem to rely so much on, um, attributes for contributing to the uh for the dice pool that like if you're leaning into something you're quite good at uh or yeah. that you're strong enough for your attribute even if you suck at the skill you're still doing pretty well yeah you're I, competent in your uh little area you know I, area. I didn't check to see if there was an unskilled penalty i actually don't know oh i'll, I'll double check and see if there is this doesn't yeah, feel like that's the good. kind of game that would do that because right. it's uh let's see here Untrained of 78. Maybe it increases the difficulty by one. No, so use your base attribute. Ooh. Love it. You know, for, for a game that is trying to be a, uh, uh, that is about these like heroic, uh, you know, epic characters, that, that feels yeah. right, you know? Yep. Like, I get why that's in some games too, but then, you know, it yeah. feels kind of fun and especially as like Savage Worlds having always the ability to at least try something you're not you're not trained in. Yeah. I really like that, so that's cool in this. Do you know what that natural awareness is for? Um it's kind of like passive perception. Uh so if someone is trying to sneak on you, that's what um uh that's gotcha. what I use to to do secret roles for myself. Yep. Uh, there's an extended task res, uh, you know, uh, thing in this as well, where you you roll up and you're you adding successes up towards a la larger goal. Yep. Um, that the fight with the minions was surprisingly more satisfying than uh, and it, like interesting than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, like so, I thought that um, Kazan, although so he's he is um, he he is a combination of melee and miracles, but um, but he's not a great melee fighter you know he's um his warhammer yeah. is is outstanding but he's really average you know if you come right down to it he's not a knight you know he's a um, no and so and so there is a bunch of them and so they took a piece out of him which you know i thought that was kind of fun you know i mean that's that was part yeah. of it and so he decided to turn around but he's also capable with his with his powers to go in and you know sealed it right back up um and then she took care of business with that uh, with that misspell. That misspell was really badass. And you, I mean, you got a great roll on it as well. But it was uh, a big roll. It was a big roll. Yeah, yeah. That was really cool. And the um, um, smart use of your soul fire as well, because wasn't it on the re rolls where you got all those uh, points? Um, you know that. Let's see here. That didn't work out. Wasn't that the one where I just rolled like crap like two or three times in a row and it just uh, didn't did quite... Uh... Mm, let's see here. Arcana. Where's the Arcane Blast? Light of Sigmar. Uh, here are Cloying Mists. Oh, yeah, no, no, you're, you're right because you, you didn't re-roll. That was just a flat-out roll. Five, yeah. five, six, six, six. And yeah, you had one focus it. point, so you squeezed one more success out of it. I really like the focus points. It, it's a neat. It's nice. It is. Yeah, it's not quite the it same has a thing. Little extra something. Mm hmm. It's a, it's a neat little, and it it uh, it isn't an obtrusive mechanic. Like it's not something that's gonna be that would be cumbersome to work with. And if you're playing yeah. in person, you know, it's it's a matter of like looking at the dice that you rolled and it's kind of ticking one over 
one yeah. closer to success, right? Like that's yep. that's yep. very cool. I, I like the variety of spells that she had as well too as a starting character. Yeah. And she I did, did her jam, like those, those two, they were, you know, one damaging spell, one healing spell. Um, yep. As your characters advance, you know, or as characters advance, they would be able to access more abilities and such. But yeah, it's pretty fucking well, and, cool. And, and the fact that uh, obviously we have two characters, but let's say you had at least four, you're, pro you know, not necessarily, but you're, you're going to have a number of PCs in the same zone a fair amount of the time. And he casts that healing and it hits everybody. That's... That's a powerful spell. That's pretty spell. awesome. That's a, that's a big deal. Uh, when these are t the um, the red caps are some of like the most boring adversaries you're, you'll fight too, because like <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. some really <laughs> fucking cool ones in here, and the game apparently like you know that's there's that illustration uh, I think we were looking at in Death Watch, where it's like a Space Marine, a Death Watch Space Marine, and then there's like this enormous Tyranid creature in front of them. Yeah. Um, like that's a, a that seems to be a pretty par for the course thing in Soulbound. Like, okay, yeah. you're able to to take on like hordes of enemies, or you know, great big powerful scary creatures, and uh, that's just sort of part of the of the game. Cool. It's just yep. to play at that tier. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, the fun. I felt that played pretty quick too. Like we spent a lot of time drinking up the the setting and the role playing and stuff like that. But like the um, I think your fight lasted maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, and, and it would get faster, right? I mean, I'm, I'm like, yeah. roll, I'm running two of them, and we know then we not you, you know, you haven't played a run, I haven't played a run. Yeah, you know, I'm running two of them, I've never run them before, and particularly those meta currencies. So I know there, there is a fair amount of time in the meta currencies that once you've had a combat or two, it's not that's going to be, you know, it's going to be easy. I love um, the idea of Soulfire being uh, shared too. That's a really, because it is, it feels like it's a much, um, it doesn't refresh as often, but it's neat that it's t it's keyed to the goals. So there yeah. is a clear like, guys, if we do this, I can get us back some, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. So there's a neat um, in-game thing. And we didn't get into it in the end. It's, it's beyond the scope of the star starter set, but there's like downtime rules in it too. Oh. So, like, similar to what there is in uh, Warhammer Fantasy Fourth, where you can like you could do stuff and work on stuff between uh, set between sessions too. Nice. So cool. Yeah. All right. Nice time. Well, then, uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for our for our maiden voyage into the mortal realms with uh, Soulbound uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar roleplay. As is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, uh, the game, or uh, any other thing, or I guess we're not playing a campaign with this, but uh, we it's definitely going to be... It's a contender for uh, something special we got planned. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, please do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section of the video, uh, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, you can also uh, find a link in the description of the video to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, where all of us are active, and we have channels there dedicated to this game. Uh, no, we don't. To, to I'm sorry, to Warhammer uh, role-playing games. Um, most games we run on the channel, as well as a ton of other great channels. Um, it, with great people on them, uh, helpful, friendly, knowledgeable. Uh, you are more than welcome to join us over on the Dungeon Musings Discord server. Uh, there is also a link down below to uh, something called here. Uh, sorry, to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent uh, unionized retailer of hard to find and auto print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have an amazing selection of uh, uh, new uh, role playing games, board games, and card games, they have an unmatched selection of hard to find and auto print RPGs, uh, including. Um, yeah, I mean, just uh, I've filled so many collections uh, from their um, uh, from Noble Knights or thanks to Noble Knight, um, and they also have a terrific uh, feature called a want list. Uh, if they have something uh, that is listed but is not in stock, you can put it on the want list. They'll send you an email when it comes in, and then you can pick it up at your leisure. If you make up uh, outs right now, they are having at the time of recording their spring uh, sale where you can save. Uh, it's pretty good. It's like 10% or at least on uh, uh, everything that's in their stock. Um, but outside of that, if you um, make a purchase of $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code SPRINGMUSER, all one word, all caps, and you will save yourself 10% on your purchase. Um, that is, that'll be valid up until 
uh, July 1st, 2023, following which we'll have a different uh, um, different discount code. So if, if you're watching this at another time, come back to one of our more recent videos and you'll find what the current discount uh, code is. Um, we also have a link down below to the dungeon to the um, Hero Save Villages uh, campaign, which is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts in Ukraine and the surrounding countries. Um, all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman. It just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. Uh, and as a small way of saying thank you, um, we for every ten, if you donate ten dollars uh, or more since January first, you can head on over to the Charity Initiatives channel on the Dungeon Musings Discord server and cast your vote for our next charity session. We're running a year-long charity campaign called the Year of Ill Omens. Each session has been shaped by donors and uh, including selection of games, selection of uh, time period and whatnot. And uh, we're pretty neck and neck with two different games right now on this one. So uh, whoever uh, heads on over to the Charity Initiatives channel can be the tiebreaker. Um, there is also, uh, if you donate 10, $25 or more, uh, then, um, we will uh, you'll you'll get uh, entered into the next charity raffle. Uh, if uh, every twenty five dollars gives you a chance to win one of the prizes from the charity raffle, which include uh, an opportunity to play with us, uh, some uh, two copies of the D Genesis uh, Rebirth Edition core rule books for the D Genesis RPG. Um, there's a chainmail dice bag made by our resident armorsmith, Dave, uh, which are just beautiful. And he's donated one of those for every uh, one of our uh, raffles. So lots of great opportunities to win some cool gaming stuff, uh, an opportunity to, put, to uh, play with us, an opportunity to um, vote on the uh, charity campaign we're running this year, and most importantly, a, a chance to help out some kids who could really use some help. Last thing I will say is an enormous thank you to Sean for joining me in the mortal realms today. Uh, we we found out today that we were down uh, pretty much every, uh, all of our other players, and uh, uh, I'm really glad we gave this one a try today, Sean. This was a lot of fun. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, really good game. So then uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for tonight's Soulbound one-shot. Uh, as is always the case, uh, well, I've already, I'm starting it over again. I'm a broken record. We're trapped in a time loop, Sean. I'm starting the outro all over again. <laughs> Instead, let me default uh, back to say, uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back in uh, the Coronas Expanse with our ongoing Rogue Creator campaign in two weeks' time. But until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our heroes in the mortal realm realms are running into in the city of Bright Spear. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming.